Right, Sean Seabrook is a former of all this, put together a pretty good career at Rutgers. He was co-defensive player of the week in the game following the Army this year, and he's a mainstay on defense for them. I think also, I think the key to their defense is their middle linebacker, Gary yeah. Brackett. He's solid. He's a former walk-on that was team MVP last year. So look for those two players to make some plays for Rutgers this, in this ballgame. If there was ever a week when Tennessee captains need to step up, and show some leadership. Hopefully they have done that this week. I think that's the thing that's lacking on this Tennessee football team is leadership. And I think when you want leadership, you go to your captains, Will Offen Usel, Eddie Moore, and Omari Hand. And I think those guys have to be leaders on the field because this team needs some discipline. And I think with discipline comes good fundamental football. And that's what Philip Fulmer wants from his football team today. Well, if you were hanging around Tennessee's practice this week, there are two words that were well, in your mind forever, shall we say. Basics and fundamentals. They drove those things home, didn't they? Yes, they did. So look for those today. It's going to be a good football game. The T has been formed. Here comes Tennessee. Florida. Well, you go back to 1994, and there is your answer. For the most part, they have won. Of course, last year they played Florida late in the year due to the 9 11 events, and then they went into the championship game and lost to LSU. Rutgers Scarlet Knights come onto the field. They have one victory this year. That was against Army, 44 to nothing. They have lost. Three ball games they lost last week to a pretty good Pittsburgh team, but played a decent football game. Coach Shariano, the head coach, Greg Shariano, who, by the way, has had a great background as far as tutelage is concerned, Terrence. He worked under Joe Paterno at Penn State and also down with Butch Davis at the University of Miami. And you're right, and he was also on the Chicago Bears defensive coaching staff as a defensive assistant, so a really good background. Tennessee has won the toss and deferred to the second half. We'll take a break. You're watching Tennessee football on CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. Well, I think everyone who saw last week's ball game, either in person or on television, knows very well that Tennessee made enough mistakes in that ball game, Terrence, for an entire season. They were embarrassed. The coaches were embarrassed. The coach actually apologized to fans, and they went back to work, and they worked hard this week, and we'll see tonight if that work has paid off. You're right, and it was enough for a full season, but that only happens in four minutes and 55 seconds. Well, last week we had a driving rainstorm. Tonight we have a beautiful night in Knoxville in East Tennessee, 77 degrees. The wind is calm at the moment, and the forecast is for clear skies. Southeastern Conference crew, of course, will be working this football game tonight. Penn Wagers is your referee. There's the lineup of guys who will be calling the action. Nate Jones, number 32, number 24, Brandon Hall will be deep to receive Newman's kickoff, and he has done a marvelous job for Tennessee. The Vols have yet to prove a whole lot in the season. We know they have a lot of talent, but they have defeated a couple of winless football teams and then lost the big one to the Florida Gators. The Vols lead in this series two games to one one of the more memorable games in Rutgers history was beating the balls in 79 seven to nothing and one of the great shockers here's Jones coming out for Rutgers big hole streaking across mid court down the sidelines he goes and he's gonna go all the way for a Rutgers touchdown Nate Jones at midfield it looked like Tennessee might have a slight angle on him. They couldn't catch him. 
He did a beautiful job down the sidelines and has electrified the Rutgers sideline and has stunned over 100,000 Tennessee fans in here. Terrence? What an awesome job of Nate Jones of setting up the return and a good job of Rutgers of blocking on the return and just an excellent, excellent play. Ryan Sands will attempt the extra point and this crowd, which was really stunned last week in the Florida game, especially during that five minute period that is almost beyond description. And then they give up the touchdown on the very first play, the kickoff, and Rutgers goes the distance untouched. Let's take another look at it, Terrence. He takes it about two yards deep in the end zone, and Tennessee been really good this year on kickoff coverage, but an excellent job of blocking by the Rutgers return team and a good set up there by the runner, and Philip Newman's not going to catch it. Philip Newman was the only man who had a real shot at him after he crossed the 50-yard line, and you saw the results. He couldn't do it. Let's take one more look. He does a good job of staying with his wedge and a good job of blocking by the wedge. Not a Tennessee player in sight until there, Rashad Baker. Another missed tackle. Tennessee was haunted by that. pleased with a start of this ball game and coach Iano said that when when he was on other coaching staffs he he daydreamed about coming back to Rutgers to be the head coach at the University of Rutgers he said you know people thought he was kind of unusual to want that but he really wanted that and he said it's going to take a while to build the kind of program we want but when we build it it's going to last there's the hero of the night we mentioned Rashad Baker he actually has worked out some I think with some of these guys in the offseason and around the Rutgers campus. He uh, hails from Camden, New Jersey, but he has spent some time there. There are no Tennesseans on the Rutgers team. We mentioned Sean Seabrooks at the top of the show. He did play briefly for Tennessee, he got homesick, returned to Rutgers, to New Jersey, and to be near his family, and has done a good job. He's a very solid football player. And I must Corey say, and, uh, is back ready to receive. And I must say, Tennessee has a good threat at the return spot in Corey Larkins. He was averaging about 44 yards of return coming into the Florida game last year. Onside kick. I don't think it went the full 10 yards. It will be Tennessee's football. Rutgers really took a chance there, and it backfired on them. But hey. You come into a ball game as a 41-point underdog, why not take a chance? If you're Rutgers, you have nothing to lose. Pull out all stops. Get your team some confidence. Get Tennessee wondering about the game last week if the things are carrying over into this ball game. As Tennessee looks back on the Florida loss, one thing that may haunt them this year is Florida is a good team, but they are not a great team. They're awarding the football to Rutgers, are they? Yes, I think they are. They changed their mind. I'm not sure what happened there. But the official has awarded the football to Rutgers after first signaling. Well, two of them, as a matter of fact, signal Tennessee football. Now out of the flat, complete to Ray Pillich, the fullback, coming out of the fullback position and receiving it out of the flat. He's hit by Eddie Moore. Eddie Moore is one of the Tennessee balls who did have a great game against Florida last week. Had a couple of just real unbelievably hard hits. And he is a man who needs to set the tone. Here's the official. There is no foul on the play. Second down. So they've changed their mind on an onside kick. And now they have changed their mind on a penalty. So the Southeastern Conference uh, officiating crew, I assume, is going to do a good job starting off a little different. And Bob, I'll mention Ron Cubitt is the backup quarterback. He gets his start today. He's only played 48 snaps coming into today's ball game. And he is the son of the offensive coordinator for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. They give it off to their tailback, and that's Clarence Pittman. Actually, they come into this ball game without their starting quarterback, Ted Trump, and without their starting running back, Marcus Faison. Here's your Rutgers offense, Carswell. McDonald, Pismuka, and also McManus and Williams. Pretty solid up front, not great, but solid. And the quarterback today is Cubitt, 
As we said, he is the backup, but really there's not a great deal of difference in he and the starter. In fact, there was a big question mark right up to the opening game as to who would start. He's back. He's throwing high. It's incomplete. Throwing over the middle. Pass incomplete. The what? starting quarterback, that man who started the season, Ted Trump, actually was a baseball player who came over and tried out for quarterback, uh, tried out for the team and won the starting job. But as we said, Cubit and he are almost equal. So it is not a great drop off going to their number two quarterback. As far as their offense is concerned, that has been the very anemic part of this team. Defensively, they've had their moments when they played fairly well. Pittsburgh had trouble moving the ball on them last week. But the offense has been a problem. But of course, as we saw, special teams really got them starting great in this ball game. And Rutgers was guilty of holding. Tennessee declined, and Rutgers is going to have to punt. And it will be Rashad Baker who will drop back at his 10 yard line. It will be Mike Barr who's standing back in punt formation for the Scarlet Knights, shockingly leading in this football game as a result of the kickoff return. Here's Baker looking for some room, dancing, and can't find too much. Going to be dropped right around the 20 21 yard line. At that point, Tennessee's offense will finally get on the field, and we'll see what happens. Gary Brackett made the stop of Richard Baker that time. A 34-yard punt with an 8-yard return. Here's your Tennessee offense brought to you by Shoney's Munoz. Sean Young gets the start at left guard. Wells and Smith rounding out the lineup there. And the Tennessee offense headed by quarterback Casey Clawson. Jabari Davis starts in place of Cedric Houston, who has started each of the three games at tailback. He suffered a thigh bruise, actually, in the Middle Tennessee game. And uh, also was kind of re-aggravated that early in the Florida game. And did not come back in the second half of the Florida game. So I'm assuming two things there. Jabari has looked pretty good in practice. And also, there's still a little bit of a problem with the thigh bruise as far as Cedric's concerned, uh, Terrence. If you're Tennessee and you want to get your offense in a flow, and start to establish an identity. You need healthy people at every position. I'll note also that Tennessee is starting to move some people around on the offensive line, trying to find what group is going to be the best group for them to be successful, both running the football and passing the football. Sean Young had asked to be redshirted this year. Tennessee was going to grant that. Then Respert got the shoulder injury. Respert is available to play some if needed, but they felt like they needed to bring him. Sean back into the lineup, and so they have done that at left guard. And the red shirt is gone. All right, Clawson with Jabari Davis at tailback. He gives it out to Jabari Davis. The big man rumbles across the 30-yard line before he is knocked down by Jarvis Johnson, just shy of the 35. A good opening burst by Jabari Davis. And you had to believe that this was how Tennessee was going to start the football game. Joni's Rutgers defensive starters, Ray Moore, Will Burnett, Gary Gibson, and Ryan Neal are the men up front. And your backers, the best of the bunch is the middle guy. And he's going to be, uh, as Terrence talked about him at the top of the show, going to be very active tonight. Here goes Jabari Davis outside, cuts back at midfield, and gets into Rutgers territory to the 48-yard line before Raheem Moore made the stop. Along with Jarvis Johnson, a good run, two good runs in a row by... Jabari Davis. And good blocking by the Tennessee offensive line and the whole Tennessee offense. And this is Philip Fulmer football. This is what he likes to do, pound the football, and he's got a big back that can do it. Tennessee's running game has not accomplished what they had hoped for, and that's an area they're working hard on, and it looks like it might be paying off. Here is Jabari Davis straight ahead. Not much in this one as Rutgers jams it up, headed by left tackle Will Burnett. Tennessee, like many teams, are balanced when they can run the football effectively. And the things that start to open up in the passing lanes when Tennessee runs the football really well. Balls break out of the huddle with the ball on the Rutgers 45-yard line. Davis has three carries now for 34 yards, which happens to be his number. 
straight ahead Cedric Houston who has come into the ball game so the thigh bruise is obviously not hurting him he's hit by Brian Bender the right side linebacker there's Cedric's numbers uh, Terrence pointed out during one of our breaks when you have a thigh bruise that can also become sort of a mental thing it, you, you kind of have that in the back of your mind and you wonder if you can I guess Terrence run at full speed yeah and I think also for Tennessee I think they have to start to teach their young football players to play through their injuries Lawson gets it off out on the outside to Cedric Houston and Cedric is down to the 30 yard line here comes the play the hit was made by cornerback Nate Jones and a flag came flying from deep behind the play and we'll get the official ruling as the balls are marching downfield after giving up the opening kickoff 102 yards for a touchdown it is as you saw a face mask from the referee Penn Wagner Penn wagers Mike Wallace is the umpire Gus Morris personal foul Weinsman. grasping the face mask on the defense 15 yard penalty Don Moore, the field judge, Lynn Harrington, the side judge, and Jimmy Buchanan is the back judge today. Another look. There it is. Definitely Nate Jones using the face mask to bring down Cedric Houston. That's going to draw 15 yards every time. When you use the mask to bring the runner down instead of five, you get tacked with the big one, 15. And he didn't let go, as you saw, and that accounted for the 15-yard penalty. Lawson. Hands off to Houston. Houston tries to slide outside his left tackle and not a whole lot of running room there before the Scarlet Knights bring him down. Got two. Bob, I can sense there's a sense of urgency with this Tennessee offensive football team. They're jumping up off the ground. They're, they're getting back to the huddle. That's something that we didn't see in the Florida game. I really thought they were kind of casual in their yeah. approach to the Florida football You're game. You're exactly right. Gary Brackett, the middle linebacker that Terrence pointed out earlier. Very active guy was the guy who made that tackle. This time they spread the field just a little bit on the right side with two receivers, and they put a man in motion to the right in the slot. Lawson throws back. Rutgers read it beautifully. Troy Fleming had nowhere to go. Rutgers defensively almost like they were in the huddle on that one. They knew exactly what was coming. You're right. <laughs> a good call here by Tennessee, but this is played really well by the Rutgers linebacker just plays it well and does a good job of breaking up the pass. He had it for a second, but they sure knocked it loose right there. That's Brian Holman, who's 6'3", 242 pounds, who came up to make the stop for Rutgers. Tennessee driving with the football, trying to get on the scoreboard after falling 7 to nothing behind with the 100-yard kickoff return. Actually, a shade over 100 to open this ball game by the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Now time they out. defeated Tennessee in Rutgers, 1979, the and one of the worst losses Tennessee has ever experienced. It was a 13 to seven ball game. Tennessee won another meeting by a score of seven to nothing, and they won the last meeting with Rutgers in 85, 44 to nothing. You're watching Tennessee football on CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. Well, there's Randy Sanders, the offensive coordinator, talking with Casey Clawson. Randy, of course, works on the sidelines. We'll have to check to see if the chief is on the sidelines. There had been some conversation as to whether the defensive coordinator, John Chavis, who came down in the second half of the Florida game to work from the sidelines, and we'll see if he's down there now. There's uh, Coach Giano of Rutgers University in his second year. He's a very young guy. I think he's actually the youngest coach in Division One. He's 36 years old. Yeah, he's my age, and I, I don't think I could coach a football team. Uh, I'll no Something to note, and there you see John Chavis, as you mentioned, down on the field, down there to get close to his guys, make sure they're getting the calls in on, on the defense. Tennessee is fifth in the SEC, Bob, in third down production at 46%, and they're last in the SEC in the red zone. All right, let's see now how Coach Sanders wants to approach this. Well, he wants to put it in the air, and Rutgers puts Casey Clawson on the ground. Gary Brackett, that active middle linebacker we mentioned, 
breaks through and makes the play. He had no chance. And so now Tennessee is faced with a fourth down and about 17 situation. Another look. Brackett's going to come up the middle, and Clausen doesn't see him at all. Tennessee, I think, had four or five wides out in the route, and when you do that, you got to have a hot route from your wide receivers. I don't think they got one or, or were able to pick up the blitz. Ball will be placed on the 30 for Alex Walls, making it a 40-yard attempt. It's down, it's on the way, and it is no good. Well, there is reason for concern. He had one blocked. He missed an extra point in the Florida game. Terrence? I, I, don't, I don't know if you really want Alex Walls in the ball game. I think he's still hampered by that quad pull. And with a kicker, that having a, a, a pull quad in your, in your kicking leg, and so that's going to be difficult for him. He gets it away. He looked like right there he knew that he had missed it. Little hesitation by the official to signal it off, though. So Tennessee's drive dies with the missed field goal. And Rutgers continues to lead this football game, folks, with 9.51 remaining in the quarter. Running outside is Clarence Pittman. Number two tailback, and he's out of bounds right around the 26 or 7-yard line. The officials are discussing it because we do have a flag down on the play. Back at the 22-yard line, a flag is down. I think this is going to be holding against Rutgers. They had a handful of Kevin Simons jersey. That is the call, as you saw from the official. Beautiful night in Knoxville. It's been a gorgeous day after all the rain of last week, and actually some rain just about uh, 24 hours holding ago. But on the offense, 10-yard penalty. Down remains first. And I know Tennessee fans everywhere are saying, why couldn't this weather have been here last week? Because Tennessee did not handle the rain at all. Florida, on the other hand, did. <laughs> Got to give them credit for that. Omari Hand, Andre Dickerson, Ed Kendrick, Dimitri Beal are the guys up front right now for Tennessee. But they're tight end in motion. Cubic throws out to that tight end in motion, and he gets hit, gets away from one tackler, but is dropped. That's L.J. Smith, big tight end, who is 6'4", 252 pounder. Here's your Shoney's Tennessee defense. Omari Hand, Rashad Moore, Dimitri Beal, and Andre Dickerson. And the linebackers, Moore, Whiteside, and Simon, who have played very well this year. Willie Miles, Julian Battle, Rashad Baker, and Jabari Greer in the Tennessee secondary. Comes a second down at about 14 situation. Cubit with an eye backfield. Gives it off to his tailback. There's some daylight as he gets up to the 25-yard line. It's Clarence Pittman. He's hit by Kevin Simon. He got about three. Correction on that, he got closer to seven yards. Good blocking up front from Rutgers and a good job of Tennessee of getting to the football and locking up. Hit the hole pretty quick, didn't he? Ball is on the 26 yard line where it now becomes a third down situation at about seven. Remember they had a loss of yardage there. So it's a big down for the Tennessee defense. Third and seven. Cubit back to throw. Throws under the middle. Intercepted. Intercepted by Whiteside. Down the sidelines. And hit and dropped at the 10-yard line. Big play by Keon Whiteside. Tennessee middle linebacker. You know, Bob, we talked about Tennessee trying to find some leadership on this football team. And sometimes you have vocal leaders and sometimes you have players that lead by example. And Whiteside has Tennessee off to a good start. 26 yards after the return by Keon Whiteside, who displayed a little speed after the catch. Yeah. And a good job of locking on to the receiver and coming underneath with the interception. It was intended to pass for the tight end, and Whiteside stepped right in front of L.J. Smith. Here's the handoff to the tailback. It is Jabari Davis crashing straight ahead for short yardage. Scarlet Knights, Ron Jernett. 
I left have a tackle, back up left tackle, made the stop. I have a feeling that that play was designed to go left, and Jabari Davis thought he saw something to the right side, but nothing there but Scarlet Knights. He sees a cutback lane, and <laughs> there's nothing there. Jomo Fagan there to block two Scarlet Knights and can't get it done. Lawson now sends a man in motion to his right. One receiver set on the left side. Probably looking for his tight end. Can't find him. Going to be hit and knocked down by Raheem Moore, the left defensive end, who would not be denied on that one. So Tennessee's offense is again beginning to sputter right here. Lost four on that play. And good protection by the Tennessee offensive line. Casey Clausen has plenty of time to get rid of the football. Just can't find a wide receiver open. So that brings up a third down and about 14 yards to go with the ball the length of the football shy of the 15-yard line. Coach Ciano has to be very pleased with what has developed here with his heavily underdog Scarlet Knights. Came in about a 41-point underdog. Tennessee in a spread formation, three receivers to the right, one to the left. They keep the tail back in. And now Clawson looks it over and doesn't like what he sees. Timeout. Tennessee, their first half out of the half. Lawson decided to, rather than go with what he was uncomfortable with, he decided to call the timeout and go talk with Randy Sanders. You're watching Tennessee football on CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. Well, in case you joined us about 10 seconds late on the opening kickoff, the throw into the end zone, touchdown! Derek Tinsley. 14 yard touchdown plus into Tinsley. It was a perfect throw and a great move by Tinsley to get a half step open in the end zone. A good call by Tennessee. They match up, Rutgers matches up a linebacker one on one with Derek Tinsley. And Derek Tinsley's too elusive for any linebacker. And Clausen does a good job of threading the ball into him for the touchdown. He had a touchdown against Florida. He looked pretty good in that ball game. They had promised to get him more involved this week, and I would say that's involved. The extra point is up there, and it is good. And we'll take another look at the touchdown as Tennessee ties this game at 7 all. As you said, a critical third down. Man coverage on Tinsley and Clausen. That's just an unbelievable throw by Casey Clausen. He threads this ball in between two defenders. Does a good job of looking the defense off it. <laughs> I'm, I'm still astonished by this throw, Bob. I said he had a half a step. It was actually less than that. What? <laughs> there is Tinsley. He is a big play, potentially a big play guy. He's a great athlete. That's the thing about it. You've got to get him involved, either running from tailback or receiving. And Somehow, you've got to get him involved a lot. There's the drive. Three plays, 10 yards, took a minute, 36. And you and I talked about out of the Wyoming game that the more the young players get involved in the ball game, the more their confidence comes up and the more they want to learn. And Tennessee's going to get an opportunity in this game to play some of their second teamers. They need to get them all the reps that they can. We are expecting to see Jonathan Wade, a true freshman receiver and perhaps a, a couple of other young guys as well. We might see Gerald Riggs, very highly touted tailback, who has not seen any significant action other than special teams play since the opener against Wyoming. So Tennessee finally gets on the scoreboard here, and it comes at 6.32 remaining in the first quarter of play after Rutgers had scored on the opening play of the football game. It is now a 7-7 contest. Brandon Hall and Nate Jones will be back, and I would suggest they not kick it to Nate Jones this time. Jones is number 32, Hall is number 24. Philip Newman will be kicking off. You see him six foot one out of Marietta, Georgia, transferred to Tennessee from Georgia Tech, and has been really a pleasant addition to the Tennessee team because he's been able to get the ball into the end zone on numerous occasions. This one's going to be about two yards deep or three yards deep, and they'll down it. Brandon Hall 
decides not to come out of there with this one. A wise choice, I would say, on his part. There's Newman, who has turned out to be a good weapon. Seven to seven ball game here in Knoxville. You're watching Tennessee football on CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. Well, the Vols offense finally gets untracked on a 14-yard pass play from Casey Clawson to Derek Tensley after driving down and missing on a field goal in an earlier effort. And now Rutgers goes back on offense. Double receiver set on the left side. They get it off to the tail by Clarence Pittman. And he gets maybe just a yard beyond the 20 before he is dropped by Kevin Simon. Gain of only a yard. There's Kevin Simon, who came on to fill in for the injured Burnett and was expected to pay, play a great deal anyway, but has just really solidified that position. Not quite the speed of Burnett, but he's fast enough. Cubit at quarterback. Let's see what his father, the offensive coordinator, has called. He sends the tailback right up the middle and across the 30 to the 31-yard line. Clarence Pittman, and this time the middle linebacker, Keon Whiteside, made the stop. I'll the agree with 10. I'll agree with you. Clarence Pittman has a burst, but a big hold there by the Rutgers offensive line, and he's through to pick up the first down. I mean, he's one of those kids in the second step. He's full speed. Not dancing, running straight ahead. Tennessee's defense has been very solid for the past several years against the run, consistently ranking in the top ten in the nation in that department. Cuban to his tailback. And Tennessee really jammed this one. Whiteside Simon is there. Clarence Pittman got hit by the Tennessee linebacker. And nowhere else to go. Simon, when he hits you, you're going down. And Tennessee is able to put eight men in the box when they want to stop the run because of the, the corners, Willie Miles and Jabari Greer. Secondary kind of fell apart last week against Florida, but prior to that and coming into the season, it was one of the strengths of the Tennessee defense. We did get a great performance last week in a losing effort by Julian Battle at safety. I thought he played exceptionally well. Two receivers set left, put a man in motion to the left, and Cubitt looks that way all the way. Fires out to his tight end, who is up to the 40-yard line before he is knocked out of bounds in front of the Rutgers bench by Eddie Moore. L.J. Smith, 6'4", 252-pound tight end. It was no doubt Cubitt was going to him. He looked at no one else. And L.J. Smith was preseason all Big East coming into this season and picked by the Sporting News to be one of the top ten tight ends in, in the country. Julian Battle, as we mentioned earlier, was in on that tackle also. There is Smith. He's rated pretty high by the pro folks. So now Tennessee's defense looking at a third and one. Let's see what the Scarlet Knights go with. They go with a pass play out in the flat. Good call. Wide open. In the Tennessee territory and still driving is Ray Pillage, the fullback. That's the second time they have come up with that play, and it's successful. Rashad Baker finally made the stop from safety. And Philip Fulmer felt like coming into this football game that Rutgers could cause them some problems throwing the football, and they're doing some, some misdirection things to get the, get the football out to some of their athletes. Pillage, the fullback, coming out of the backfield down to the 41-yard line, so... Big game for the Scarlet Knights. They're moving the football. We're tied at seven with 323 remaining here in the first quarter of play. Crowd was stunned with the opening kickoff return by Rutgers. And now they're trying to cheer the defense on. Rutgers moving with the football. This time Clarence Pittman doesn't find a whole lot of room. He is hit by Dimitri Beal, one of the first men in. The game is only two. So it'll be a second down situation for the Scarlet Knights. There's a big Amari hand, Eddie Moore in your picture. Seven to seven ball game. Tennessee came into this one favored 40, 41 points. After this, they catch Arkansas one week from tonight. That is a night game. 
has been moved for television purposes tonight. The 7:45 Eastern kickoff next week. Here's Cubit getting to his tailback, who stumbled and still got back almost to the line of scrimmage. Pittman is finally driven out of bounds. Willie Miles, one of the men hitting him, Julian Battle, Dimitri Veal. This play's designed to get to the corner, and, and Pittman trips there, but I, I still don't think against Tennessee, they run so well, so much team speed on defense that you're going to be able to run east and west and, and gain anything against Tennessee. There's Julian Battle, big safety, 6'3", 205. So now the Rutgers is looking at a third and nine. You figure pass play right here, probably something to the tight end or... Maybe coming out of the backfield with one. Here is Cubit firing. It is complete. A little curl pattern that's complete down to the 25, 26 yard line. Moving with the football, the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Take another look at it right here, Terrence. And a great job by the wide receiver. Comes back to the football. There's not a whole lot of separation between the wide receiver and the DB, but he comes back to the football catches the football and gets all he can, picks up the first down. His name is Josh Hobbs, who just came into the ball game, number 84. There he is. Cubit. Quick handoff to Clarence Pittman and a short game, two yards before he is knocked down. Whiteside, Keon Whiteside along with Kevin Simon. Made the hit. Good blocking up front by Rutgers. Tennessee does a little stunt there with Ed Kendrick, and Rutgers does a good job of picking it up. So now it's second down and eight. Rutgers moving with the football on the Tennessee defense. There's Johnny Chavis, the man in charge of the Tennessee defense, looking a little bit concerned right now. A whole lot concerned, as a matter of fact. Two receivers at the bottom of your screen. I backfield. Cubit back, and being pressured, going to be dropped back at the 32-yard line. A host of volunteers led by Madre Dickerson and Mark Jones coming up from safety that time on a blitz. Minus eight yards on that one. As we mentioned, Tennessee coming after Cubit and good pressure or good coverage in the secondary. They bring Mark Jones on a safety blitz, and he comes up with the sack. Mark Jones is a good athlete, and in the nickel and dime package is always in there for Tennessee. That's the end of the quarter and somewhat of a shock here. It is a seven to You're watching Tennessee football on CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. That onside kick was first signaled to Tennessee and then Apparently overruled by another official and given to Rutgers. Here's a bounce outside. Nice move by the tailback Pittman. Deep down in the Tennessee ter territory, almost to the 10 yard line. Pittman is having a career day against the Vols defense. We talked about his his speed, and there you see his quickness and cutting ability. He just leaves Montre Dickerson in his shoes. Let's take a look at the first quarter stats. First downs, yards rushing, Tennessee a slight edge. Passing belongs to Rutgers, as total yardage does, and time of possession certainly in Rutgers' favor in the first quarter. And now they're threatening to take the lead again. It's 7-7. Seven to seven. Nice fake, and a pass out at the flat, and it is to Loomis. Chris Loomis, 6'4", 230 pounder, just made a nice move, but really it was the fake by the quarterback that set the whole thing up. Watch the fake again here. Absolutely awesome fake. The whole Tennessee defense going to the right side of the field and the tight end's just wide open. Philip Foom was really concerned about the multiple formations in their passing attack. Felt like they could move the football. Well, that was a beautiful fake at the tight end who's been open quite a bit tonight was right there for the touchdown, and so Rutgers has retaken the lead. 
It is up. The extra point is up by Ryan Sands, and it is good. And Rutgers leads at this ball game. Shocking situation, 14 to 7. They took the opening kickoff and went in for the touchdown. Tennessee came back and tied it, and Rutgers comes marching right back downfield and scores to go ahead. You're watching CSS Tennessee football. Kickoff. Michael Portiz will kick off for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Corey Larkins, who's done a good job in returning kicks this year for Tennessee, needs to come up with a big play right here. Rutgers, folks. Rutgers leading Tennessee. Ortiz approaches the ball. It's off a good one. Deep into the end zone. He's going to come out of there with it. Larkins looking for some running room. He's still fighting. Finally is spun down at about the 24-yard line. 99 out of 100 coaches would have said you should have stayed in the end zone with that one because he was maybe four yards deep in there. 99 out of 100 coaches and one other football player, Leonard Scott, telling him to stay in the end zone, but Corey Locke is feeling like he needs to make a play for his football team. Well, let's see if he ignited him a little bit. There he is on the sidelines. Give us to the tailback. And there's not much for Jabari Davis. Jammed up, maybe got a yard, and that's about it. Well, for a second, there might have been a loose ball there. Jeremy Campbell made the stop. A good job of Rutgers, a good job by Campbell of filling the hole. John Chavis said he noticed last week when Tennessee had all the missed tackles versus Florida that the kids were stopping their feet. They weren't bringing their feet. And he said, if you do that, the runner's going to run through your arms every time. Davis has got five carries for 35 yards. They fake it to Davis. Blossom rolls out, cuts the corner, and gets up to about the 30-yard line. Far short of a first down before he is knocked down. So they'll be facing another big third down situation. He's got about four. So it'll make it third down coming up for Tennessee and about five yards to go. Yep, you see the score. Rutgers is leading 14 to 7. Around New Brunswick and Camden and Trenton, New Jersey tonight. They must be saying, what? What is happening? Well, they're saying that here in Knoxville, too. Tennessee, a whopping 40 plus point favorite in this ballgame. Again, Clawson. And a nonchalant walks to the sidelines after being not happy with what he saw up there. And I don't think the staff on the sideline is too happy right now. In fact, Randy Sanders is really biting. Biting mad. That's Coach Barry, you see there, gesturing to one of his linemen, Sean Young. And these are the kind of things that really sometimes takes the confidence away from your football team. You know, you, you remember what happened in last week's ball game, and you're trying to put it in the back of your mind, but then you have these, these middle mistakes. Well, Randy Sanders is talking with Casey Clawson. He was not happy with that timeout. Tennessee's burned two when apparently they didn't have maybe the right personnel or maybe they just didn't understand the call from the sidelines, whatever it was. It has not made the sidelines very happy. I, I think maybe Casey Clausen was wanting to change the play at the line of scrimmage and looked out, did, didn't like what he saw, and Randy's telling him, no, that was the correct call. Go ahead and run the play. Tennessee, two receivers set to the right, one to the left. And a third and five situation. Big down for Clausen. Needs to make a play. There it is, incomplete. In the hands of Kelly Washington. The first time they've gone to Kelly tonight and he couldn't come up with the catch. It would have been a big first down, but as it is, it's going to be a punting situation for Tennessee. And good protection by the Tennessee offensive line. Casey has all kind of time, finds Washington, just can't hold on to the football. Kelly should have had football, though. He's, he'll make that catch 99 out of 100 times. 
Sean Carty is deep to receive the punt from Dustin Colquitt. Carty is standing back on his 25-yard line. Colquitt has punted extremely well. <laughs> he gets off a gorgeous kick all the way back to the 12-yard line. They about kicked the coverage, though. It's brought back to the 21-yard line by Carter. Finally driven out of bounds by Jason Mitchell. Jason Mitchell is a freshman. 6'1", 220-pound linebacker. There's Carty. You're watching Tennessee football on CSS, your source for sports in the southeast. To say the crowd is stunned would be an understatement. That punt, by the way, by Colquitt was for 58 yards. And, Bob, he's a top punter in the SEC. He was averaging 44 yards a punt before that one. Rutgers takes over offensively, leading in this football game. Passing the right flat is incomplete. Tennessee breaks it up nicely, intended for Peace. And our Peace broke it up, intended for L.J. Smith, who's turned out to be their favorite target. He's the big tight end that Terrence spoke of, who has pro possibilities written all over him. But Robert Peace, backup middle linebacker, got in and made a great play. And Peace plays this well, and Eddie Moore almost in position to come up with the interception. Peace had one real good suck in the Florida game. off to the tailback. Tennessee sees that one coming from a mile away. Clarence Pittman and Rashad Moore is all over him, among others. Harrelson also there. Paris Harrelson, there is another true freshman. He wears number 98. You want to see him in action? And there he is. And Paris Harrelson does a good job of scraping down the line of scrimmage and running this play down from behind. He's just a, a real solid athlete who is still learning played linebacker who's played some defensive end. Cupid goes into the shotgun for the Scarlet Knights. Gives it off to his tailback Pittman. Pittman gets to the 30. Gets outside and gets to the first down marker it appears. Mark Jones finally ran him down. This is a good call for several reasons. One, because it's, it's a little misdirection, catches Tennessee going in one direction, and the other that the, the DBs for Tennessee are playing man coverage downfield, and Jones is the only one that can come up and make this play. Well, he got the first down. You see Battle and, and Willie Miles running with the right wide receivers down the field. They don't even know he has the ball. There's Clarence Pittman, already with 56 yards. As Chavis looks on. Two receivers set to the right side. Cubit looks that way, throws the slant, and it's incomplete. Jabari Greer breaks it up. Number 33 is Jabari. Teams have kind of shied away from him this year. They've gone a lot to the other side because Greer, well, he's a good football player. He's a good cover guy. And he's probably your best disciplined DB on the field. He gave up the touchdown last week to Florida, just kind of lulled to sleep by Taylor Jacobs. Didn't really know if the ball was coming. This time, the Scarlet Knights bring three receivers set to the right side. And they're looking now at a second down and 10 situation. Cubit in the gun. Gets some pressure, but gets it away. And it's going to be another first down. Clarence Pittman. Once again, he has been killing Tennessee. Willie Miles finally brings him down, but he moves the chains one more time. And Rutgers goes with the screen, and, and Pittman, once you get the ball in his hands, Bob, he is lightning quick. And remember, folks, he's not the, actually, he's listed on their depth chart as the number three tailback. Basin could not start tonight. He's injured. Marcus Jones was listed as number two, and Clarence Pittman is number three on their depth chart. And he's playing like he wants to make the All East Player of the Week. Here's the slant. It's complete. And it's into Tennessee territory to Chris Baker. Down to about the 47 yard line before the stop is made. Robert Peace and Rashad Baker were in on the stop. Rutgers doing a good job of mixing up their plays 
maybe giving Tennessee, confusing Tennessee on defense a little bit. And you wonder if John Chavis is used to being up in the box, being able to see the field, the whole field, if he's kind of hampered from being on the sideline. First down and 10 to go for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights, leading Tennessee by a score of 14 to 7 and marching on the Volunteers. They give it to Pittman again, and this time Tennessee brings it down just about at the line of scrimmage. Rashad Moore was the man who made the stop for practically no gain. Maybe at the most we could give him a half a yard or so. Make it now. I think he got the first down. He got the first down. He did. That's about all he needed as a half a yard. And there he gets it. So it's another first down for Rutgers moving with the football on the Tennessee defense. Stunned crowd watching here at Neyland Stadium. And wherever you're watching tonight are probably stunned as well. Here's Cubitt throwing behind the intended receiver and incomplete. Intended for Aaron Martin. Out in the flat, just a little bit off target on that one. And good coverage by Willie Miles. And, and, and you made the comment that this is a quiet crowd. I don't. I can't remember the crowd being this quiet, uh, except maybe right before the invocation here today. Well, it might have been 1979. That's true. When Rutgers won 13 to 7. There you see the crowd, and they've, they've got their arms folded. Just kind of looking on. Two receivers set right, one to the left. And straight ahead they go with Marcus Jones carrying the football, and he got about three yards on the play. Dimitri Veal was at the bottom of the pile. There's a concern. Philip Fulmer trailing Rutgers with nine minutes to go in the first half of play. Came in as a 41 point favorite. There's John Chavis, the defensive coordinator. C concerned and, 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 and frustrated, I would say. Cubit now is 8 of 13 for 82 yards throwing. He's the son of the offensive coordinator, so Dad is calling the plays for him. He's back. He throws over the middle. It is another big play for Rutgers. Once again, they go to L.J. Smith, the tight end. Tennessee's got to figure out some way to stop this guy. He does a good job of working one-on-one -on -one against Eddie Moore, and as you said, he's one of the best in the Big East and maybe one of the best in the country. There he is. Gets a little bit of a breather after picking up the first down. It's first down and 10 to go. With the ball on the Tennessee 27 yard line. Cubit in the eye backfield. Two receivers on the right. They give it to the tailback, and there's nothing doing. Marcus Jones is dropped virtually in his tracks this time. He may have done one yard. Dimitri Field, who's been pretty active in the middle for Tennessee, made the stop. They bring in, <laughs> in Marcus uh, Jones because Pittman has <laughs> been off to the races. I'm sure that kid needs a drink of Pittman's water. That's worn out is what uh, his problem is. He has been a workhorse tonight. Ball is on the 26-yard line, so it's now a second down and about nine yards to go. And you wonder if the Tennessee football team is still affected by the loss to Florida, if they still have kind of a hangover from that football game. Three receiver set, one left, two right. They give it to the tailback, and Tennessee's not fooled at all. Clarence Pittman, the man we were talking about, is hit by Robert Peace and Abreu Franklin. There's Peace, who's been very active here tonight. I must say, when Robert Peace gets the opportunity to be in the football game, he makes the most of it and plays really well. Just a solid player for Tennessee. Actually, he lost about a yard on that play, so it's... Back to 10 yards to go for a first, and it's a third down. So now Tennessee's defense really needs to stand up as the balls trail 14 to 7 against the Rutgers. Cubic got plenty of time, all kinds of time. Now decides to run with it, and far short of the first down as Dimitri Veal once again makes the stop. So it'll bring up a fourth down situation at about eight yards. He actually wound up getting only two yards on that play. But he had all kinds of time 
Terrence, uh, Tennessee didn't get to him until he started running. He, and you're right, Tennessee did a good job of disguising their coverage. They were up, looking like they're going to play man coverage, and on the snap of the ball, they rolled a cover two, and I think that confused Cubitt a little bit. They will attempt a field goal, Ryan Sands. It'll be on the 33-yard line, making it a 43-yard effort. Sands kick, no. Don't know if he hit it bad or if it got partially blocked, but somebody, I think, got a hand on it. Might have been Willie Miles. It was Willie Miles, number three. We'll take another look and see Willie with an athletic move right here. Let's see if we can see where Willie Miles comes from off the corner and does a good job of laying out. He did. So they brought Willie off the edge and he did the job. Got just a piece of it enough to make it no good. So Tennessee's defense finally stands up and stops Rutgers and now or the offense really needs to do something right here. They need to get the ball's momentum back and get moving downfield. Casey Clawson. Got a two receiver set, one on each side. Fakes it to his tailback. That time throws. Got to be almost intercepted. Intended for Jason Witten at the tight end. Jarvis Johnson was right in the path. Ooh, I, I don't think this is a place to throw this football. If I'm not mistaken, it looked like there were four Scarlet Knights draping around Jason Witten. A good play action fake there. Tennessee Clausen looking all the way at Jason Witten, just locked on him, and so are the Scarlet Knights. Jarvis Johnson uh, could have still been running had he picked that one off. So Tennessee goes second down and 10. They give to the tailback and goes straight ahead. Not much gain there. And Jabari Davis met by Sean Seabrook, the former Vol. John Seabrooks, a 5'10", uh, 190-pound senior. Let's take a look at it and listen to it. Pretty good pop. You, you may need an Advil or something <laughs> after that. Jafari goes down. It's third down and eight. So here comes another in a series of big downs for Tennessee's offense. Flags fly. May have had one of those killer motion penalties right here. Now they needed eight yards and they're going to need more. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense, five yard penalty. Now remains third. Five yards after somebody moved along the offensive line. And, and those are the kind of things that just bother you it really bothers Randy Sanders in his play calling because as an offensive coordinator you want to try to get into a rhythm calling plays and it, it makes it tough to do when your team is shooting themselves in the foot with stupid penalties well you got to go 13 yards now for a first down it's third and 13 Lawson's going into the shotgun you know they're going to throw it can't find anybody and certainly he's not going to run for 13 yards Gary Brackett, the middle linebacker, brings him down, and Tennessee will be forced to give up the football again, being unable to move on a team that was defeated by Buffalo, defeated by Villanova, defeated by Pittsburgh. And Richard Baker in at wide receiver, and I think he's double covered. Just nowhere for Casey Clausen to go with the football, and he needs to protect himself when he starts to scramble, especially when linebackers are taking shots at him. Cole put to punt, Carty, Sean Carty back to receive. Again, Cole gets off a nice high kick. And he dropped it, but I think he recovered his own fumble. So Rutgers gets away with one right there, and they'll take over a first down and 10 to go. What is just really stunning about this football game is the defense has had problems. The offense has had all kinds of problems. You're watching Tennessee football on CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. It is a beautiful night in Knoxville in East Tennessee. It is not a beautiful ball game for the Tennessee Volunteers. It is rather ugly right now. Rutgers leading in this football game and with the ball. And off to the tailback. 
Bounces outside, gets positive yardage across the 35 to the 36. Clarence Pittman, Eddie Moore, made the stop. Seven-yard gain. As we said, Rutgers able to, and I think there was some holes in there on Ed Kendrick. The guy just took him to the ground. There he is being tackled, Ed Kendrick. But the SEC crew did not see that, so it is second down, and look at your time of possession. Just dominance by Rutgers. Only two yards shy of a first down right here. They give it to the tailback, and it's close. I don't think he made it. Ed Kendrick made the stop of Clarence Pittman. Looks like he might be about a half a yard shy of a first down. So it'll be now. Rutgers looking at a third and no more than a yard. There's Clarence Pittman's numbers, 15 carries, already 64 yards. And we've still got two minutes to go in the first half, 240. And Tennessee needs to be concerned here because Rutgers does so much misdirection. Tennessee could expect them to dive the ball up inside and they could slip a guy out. Timeout, Rutgers. Their second timeout of the half. Well, you heard it. Rutgers has called a timeout. They want to be sure. There's 2.31 remaining. They need uh, no more than a yard. Line Cubit hit by Rashad Baker, but not until the chains move one more time for the Scarlet Knights. A good call by Rutgers. Just an excellent quarterback sneak. They're expecting him to dive right behind the center and guard, and he slips down the line of scrimmage till he finds a seam. Good call, good pickup. I tell you, his dad called a good play that time, didn't he? <laughs> Maybe they worked on that in the backyard when he was growing up. 2-10 remaining in the first half of play. Rutgers with the football, marching and leading. Here's another big hole for Pittman. Pittman drives down to the 36-yard line. Clarence Pittman, who came into this ball game labeled as the number three tailback for Rutgers. Julian Battle and Kevin Simon finally bring him down. Just, just way too many missed tackles and it, guys not getting after the football, giving it their all. Tackles are being made downfield, not at the line of scrimmage, and Rutgers keeps moving. There, look at the yardage discrepancy here. Rutgers 186 to Tennessee 63 in total yards. First down and 10 to go for the Scarlet Knights. The give is to Pittman. The hole closed up. He tried to jump outside. Nothing doing. Tennessee finally brings him down. Robert Peace and Abreu Franklin at the bottom of the pile. We've gone under the two-minute mark. Clock is running. 124 remaining in the first half, and it's pretty obvious Rutgers is going to lead at halftime, either by 14 to 7 or a little more. And Rutgers is dominating a time of possession, and you wonder if the Tennessee defense, if their legs aren't getting a little weary. They've been on the football field a lot of this first half. Pittman has already got 80 yards now on the night here in the first half. Cubit throws complete to tight end. This time it's Brian Borer, who's the number three tight end on their depth chart. It is correction on that it's L.J. Smith. Bohr was not in there. It was L.J. Smith, who's just been killing Tennessee tonight. Time after time, he's caught the football. And the Rutgers quarterback, Ryan Cubitt, hopped off the field after that play. I don't know if a Tennessee defender got on his feet trying to go after the sack, but he definitely hopped off the field. <laughs> There's Coach Ciano, who's got to be thrilled beyond words with what he is seeing here tonight. Came in just... Well, when you're a 40-plus underdog, it's kind of humiliating, really. Well, there you have it, the quarterback comparison. And Casey Clawson being billed as one of the top quarterbacks in the nation. And Cubitt came in as the number two quarterback on a Rutgers team. That is one one football game. And you see who's having the night. And in Casey's defense, all week he talked about he needed some of the other wide receivers besides Kelly Washington to step up and start to assert themselves because Kelly's going to be double teamed and kind of taken out of the offense. Need some of those younger guys to step up and make plays. 
Third down and about five yards to go. There's Casey looking concerned as he should be and all the Tennessee players and coaches should be. They're being embarrassed right now by Rutgers University. Gets his pass away and of course he completes it and it completes it to L.J. Smith the tight end. Mark Jones made the stop. Tell you what L.J. Smith has earned his scholarship here in the first half of this football game tonight. Definitely, and L.J. Smith added some pounds in the offseason to help himself out. He didn't lose any of his, any of his niftiness, though. Tennessee having all kind of trouble covering him with linebackers, covering him with defensive backs. Rutgers leading and driving again. Here's the throw, incomplete. Nice play that time. Tennessee intended for Aaron Martin and it was broken up by Gabriel Wilson number Gab eight Look Gabriel at. Wilson almost makes an exceptional play good job of breaking up the ball but almost still caught yes by Aaron Martin just off the fingertips of Gabriel and then almost caught you're right by Rutgers Smith the tight end has 44 yards in receptions tonight and they've all come at key times when Rutgers needed to move the football. 30 seconds to go. They're already, of course, in field goal range. They're trying to go for seven. Here's Cuban going down the sidelines, out of bounds. No, they're going to say that he caught it in bounds. I thought he got hit in the air and drove him out, but no. We'll take another look. And you want to guess who? How about L.J. Smith? I tell you, this guy, if he's a tight end, he reminds me a lot of Tony Gonzalez that plays with the Kansas City Chiefs, has wide receiver ability. Good Unbelievable tell. job of turning around and finding the football and keeping his feet in bounds. Exceptional athletic ability by a tight end. Well, he had one foot in for sure, and that's all you need. The attendance announced tonight is 103,925. Most of them are cheering right now for the Tennessee defense with only 22 seconds to go. Cuban rolling to his right. And he did not get in. The official says on the half-yard line, Corey Larkins was able to bring him down. And they're going to have to hurry to get the clock stopped. Rutgers is seven seconds, six. Down to three seconds. One second. I don't know if he got it stopped or not. I don't think he did. The officials, I believe, are going to wave it off. He had one second when he got the snap, it looked like, but he never got it down. And so Tennessee really escaped on that. Boy, play. did they dodge a bullet on that play. That is what you call a real bad break for Rutgers. And I guess it was relatively inexperienced quarterback. He just couldn't quite get the ball downed and he was a half yard folks away from the end zone and Rutgers could have been leading 21 to 7 but as it is embarrassing enough for Tennessee they're down 14 to 7 to a team that they had been favored to beat by 40 points or more you are down Tennessee 4 can you believe that Rutgers 13 yards rushing big edge Rutgers Yards passing, Tennessee 26. And Tennessee not in sync on offense, Bob. Tennessee, before the, this game, was giving up 79 yards for a whole football game, and they've given up 92 in the first half. Rutgers' first half possession. Punt, interception, touchdown. There the situation as far as the first half stats are concerned. Brought to you by Shoney. You are watching Tennessee football on CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. Well, Corey Larkins will be back to receive the second half kickoff. Remember, Tennessee won the toss and deferred to the second half, and they paid dearly with Rutgers scoring on the opening kickoff. Now Tennessee will get the ball to start the second half. I... I Find words hard to come by, to be honest with you, Terrence, to describe what we are seeing right here. It's just unbelievable. Tennessee needs a spark, and Corey Larkins can give him that spark. Yes. 
Well, Corey Larkins will be back to receive the second half kickoff. Remember, Tennessee won the toss and deferred to the second half, and they paid dearly with Rutgers scoring on the opening kickoff. Now Tennessee will get the ball to start the second half. I, I find words hard to come by, to be honest with you, Terrence, to describe what we are seeing right here. It's just unbelievable. Tennessee needs a spark, and Corey Larkins can give him that spark if he gets the ball and gets a good return. Tennessee in the first half, you're not going to believe this, 26 yards passing and 37 yards rushing in the first half. All right. Corey Larkins will be standing at his goal line. The Scarlet Knights leading this football game. Great kick all the way into the end zone. Larkins coming out of there with it. He found a little bit of a hole, got to the 20 and a couple of yards beyond before he is dropped. And Tennessee's offense will go on the offense right here. There's Tennessee's first half possession. I, what can I say? That pretty well tells it all right there. That it? does, and, and, and that was one of the things they wanted to do. They wanted to start to come together as an offensive football team, and they just didn't do it in the first half. Well, let's see what Clausen and company can do. I can't imagine what was said in the dressing room at halftime. I, well, I can imagine. I, I can imagine, Bob. I was on that team in 1988 when we started out the season 0-6. So... <laughs> You've heard that speech, haven't you? <laughs> Daisy Clawson in the shotgun. Fires out of the flat. It is complete. Up to the 30 and the 32-yard line to Kelly Washington. They went to Washington one time in the first half, and he dropped the ball. I really think in the game against Florida, I think Kelly Washington was still hampered a little bit by his knee. And I think he's still hampered a little bit, and maybe that's why they're not going to him as much as they'd like to. But you got to find a way to get the football in this guy's hands. You have to. He's a playmaker. Well, early on in the season, you can say the two men, by the way, we're going to have a measurement here for the first down. Two men who've been dependable have been Jason Witt, and then you add Kelly Washington to that now that he's back. Tony Brown has had some pretty big catches, but he's turned out to be more of a possession receiver. And so they're still looking for somebody else to complement those two. First down. So it's a sense of urgency right here. It can't be lackadaisical. You can't take your time. You've got to look at everything right now from now on as a sense of real urgency for Tennessee. They're trailing Rutgers 14 to 7 at home after losing and having just a Horrible performance against the Florida Gators, especially in a five-minute span in the first half. They need something positive. They got Kelly Washington. Here goes Kelly. Down inside the 20. Gary Brackett made the stop. The future. Thank goodness. As far as Tennessee is concerned, the future arrived. And this is what I'm used to seeing from Tennessee wide receivers. Catch the football and make a play. They just get it out to him real simple, five yards. He jukes and he's off to the races. 52 yards. Ball is on the 17-yard line. First down and 10 to go. Ball's trying to drive and tie this thing up. Unbelievably bad first half offense and defense. Time of possession was almost all Rutgers. Here's the pass to Kelly Washington again down to about the 13 yard line. Number 15, Kelly Washington. Big guy, 6'4, 225. Missed the first two games, as Terrence pointed out. Came back in the Florida game. Had seven catches for 102 yards. And in the week leading up to this game, really took some heat in the media for being kind of a selfish player. But with a bad knee, had an exceptional game against Florida, seven catches for 102 yards, and the guy still not 100%. So Casey Clawson will be looking at second down and six. Firing, going deep in the corner. Touchdown! Jason Whitten, the other receiver that they have come to depend on goes deep in the corner and brings it in it's officially a 13-yard touchdown uh, 
a great call by Randy Sanders and a good job of throw and catch by Casey Clausen and Jason Witt. Now we'll have Alex Walls, and you kind of hold your breath on this one because remember he missed one against Florida. He's a couple blocked of late. Sets it down, puts it up, splits them, and Tennessee has tied it. 14 to 14 with 13.06 remaining in the third quarter. They, they go with Witten on the inside at the slot positioning. Clausen just makes a great throw. Right over his shoulder and into his arm. I don't know if Jason Witten has his football long enough. Good coverage by well, Brian Bender. He did drop it, but they say he was already held it long enough with a touchdown. That official who was approaching him did not put the hands up. But as we learned last week in the Florida game, once it's a touchdown, it's a touchdown. Yeah, they had one of those phantom touchdowns, of course. You're watching Tennessee football on CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. Back here at Neyland Stadium, 103,000. There is Shiano, who is trying to signal for an official to come over. I think he is not 100% sure that Witten held on to the football. And he will get no reversal on this. We do not have instant replay in, in college. So he's going to talk with one of the officials and express his opinion, but that's all he can do. Tennessee expressed their opinion in the Florida game over the touchdown that they didn't think happened. Let's listen. These are tits. They're not grown up. They're tits. He saw the replay on the jumbo trying and didn't think it was a catch. Wanted to let the referee know. Well, be that as it may, it's seven points on the board, and it's a 14 to 14 ball game. 13.06 remaining, there's your drive. Four plays, 79 yards. The big one, of course, the 52-yard catch and run by Kelly Washington. Took 144 off the clock. Mark Jones, Brandon Haw are deep for Rutgers. And Philip Hewman gets his kick away. Not too long, but kind of high. And Tennessee's going to cover it well and drop him at the 22-yard line. Nate Jones. The man who took the opening kickoff in this ball game all the way for a touchdown brings this one out to the 22. About 14 yards officially on the return. And Rutgers now, after seeing Tennessee march down and tie it up, will go on offense. The quarterback is Ryan Cubitt, who is the son of the offensive coordinator. Ted Trump was the man who started at quarterback in their first four ball games. But as an injury and was held out tonight. Clarence Pittman, their number three man on the depth chart, has been sensational at tailback. Here's Cubitt across, fumbled the football, and I believe Rutgers has recovered. It bounced back away from Tennessee about five yards, and it looks like that Mike Clancy, the left guard, might have come up with it. And both Tennessee and Rutgers have a player have players down on the field. We have a couple of injuries, and the training staffs are out on both sides. And Cuba decides to scramble with the football, and Tennessee, I, I can't see who that is, does a good job of knocking it out of his hand. Might have been more. It's Simon. Oh, my goodness. Kevin Simon. Tennessee cannot afford to lose a linebacker especially one who's playing as well as Kevin Simon has this season. And they look like they're working on his ankle. The Rutgers player is up and trotting off the field. He's okay. There's no problem there. But Kevin Simon is still down and being attended to. And you know Simon was still fighting back from that knee injury that he had in, in the high school all-star football game. And the good thing about it is that they're not they're not looking at his knee. But he's also not getting up. Devin Burnett, they lost on 
what was it, second or third play in the football season in the opener against Wyoming, and almost everything had been built around defensive scheme-wise. Burnett, they lost Constantine Richmond, a defensive end, before the season ever got underway. There is Simon, and he is putting no weight at all, as you can see on that right leg. They did seem to be working on the ankle. We're just hoping and praying it's not the knee, which he had repaired. Robert Peace will come in to play linebacker, but boy, that's something that I'm sure the coaching staff is just really heartbroken over right now. A great kid, Kevin Simon. Great, intense football player, and it doesn't look good. Let's see if we can see where the injury is on Simon. There you see Simon making a cutback and gets his leg rolled up by his own teammate. Back to the action, and Cuban hands off to Clarence Pittman, and Pittman slides outside his left guard and tackle and gets uh, about four yards on the play. At the bottom of the pile is Mondre Dickerson, who started this ball game tonight in place of Carlton Neal at defensive end. Madre 6'5", Junior, 265. And the Looks Tennessee like he's fired up a little bit too, doesn't Yeah, exactly. The Tennessee offense came out of out of half with a different attitude. And the Tennessee defense definitely has a different attitude. Trying to get the crowd involved in this football game. Third down, about four yards. Tennessee defense needs to stand up right here. The Rutgers would like to move those chains again. Pressure really knocks him down anymore. Eddie Moore came roaring in, fought off a blocker, and made a huge play, a loss of 10 yards. As you said, Eddie Moore, one of the captains, we talked about leadership, just not going to be blocked by Pittman and makes an exceptional play. Coming around the corner, Pittman's supposed to block him. Moore says, no, a big play by the senior captain, Eddie Moore. Rashad Baker drops back now to receive the punt from Barr, Mike Barr, standing about at his eight yard line. Gets the kick away and it is a beauty. Backing Baker up to the 26. Baker looking for room, dancing around, running out of real estate and will go down at the 36 yard line. Rashad Baker. I tell you, Rashad Baker is an exceptional athlete, but this is not the way it's coached. You don't return the football like this on a punt return. Find the seam and get north and south. You're right. 10-43 remaining in the third quarter of play. Tennessee trailed 14 to seven at half. They've come back and scored a touchdown. They get 14-14 here in the second half. They scored on their first possession. Now the punt, by the way, was for 50 yards. The return for 10. Now the offense goes back to work. Two receivers, three set left, one to the right. Casey wants to air it out long. Kelly, the future Washington. Exceptional play by Kelly Washington and a beautiful throw by Casey Clausen. Folks, he talks a lot, but you know what? He backs it up. You know, that's what you say about good athletes. They can run their mouth if they can back it up, and this kid sure can't do it. He's got two catches for over 100 yards just since the second half right here in the third quarter. He had only one ball thrown to him in the first half and dropped that one on the short pass. Clock running 10-15, third quarter. Tennessee and Rutgers tied. Here's the handoff to the tailback. Troy Fleming, touchdown! Sixteen yards up the gut. Exceptional drive by Tennessee. Two exceptional drives coming out of halftime. You know, as a football player, sometimes you got to dig down deep in yourself and find out what kind of man you are. And I'll tell you, they evaluated themselves at halftime and, and coming out playing well in the third quarter. 
And I'm sure Troy is glad to get that one on the board. Here's the Wolves extra point. It's up there, and it's good. And the Volunteers have taken the lead, finally, 21-14. to 14. There's the touchdown run by Fleming. Just a good call. A little give to Fleming. Good blocking by Wells and the Tennessee offensive line, Alvin Husel and Troy Fleming into the end zone. Tennessee takes the lead over Rutgers 21 to 14. You're watching Tennessee football on CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. Well, we didn't know for sure how Tennessee would play, how they would react to the loss to Florida. Well, they reacted by playing extremely poorly in the first half. Very sluggish on both the offense and the defense. But to be frank, it looks like a different team here in the second half. And you almost wonder, you, as a coach, you're in a, in a difficult situation when you're coming into a game and you're really stressing discipline and fundamental football because sometimes you can overcoach your team to where they are playing not to make mistakes instead of playing to make plays. Well, there it is. Two plays, 64 yards, and took a grand total of 36 seconds to get into the end zone. Lawson has it. Jason Whitten with a big touchdown pass here in the second half. A little bit on the controversial side, but nevertheless, he counted. He's had two big giant passes to Kelly Washington. So Lawson has come out really clicking in the second half. Mark Jones and Brandon Haw are deep. Nate Jones, correction, and Brandon Haw. Nate Jones remembers the man who returned the opening kickoff, so let's see if Newman kicks it away from him. I guess his Phillip will just try to kick it as far as he can. There's Randy Sanders, who's got to be a lot more pleased right now with his offense here in the second half. Still looks pretty intense, though, doesn't he? <laughs> and he'll look intense for the rest of this football season. Newman kicks it, bounces into the end zone. Turned out to be a great kick. No chance for Nate Jones to return that one. It'll be brought out to the 20-yard line where the Scarlet Knights will put it in play. First down and 10 to go. Rutgers huddled around their head coach and the assistant coaches. They break onto the field. I'll tell you what, they have played their hearts out here tonight. And they're not done yet by any means. They're Brian Cubitt, their quarterback, who my guess will be the starter from here on. <laughs> I don't know what Trump would what he could do to top him here tonight. He's been uh, outstanding. They run straight ahead against Tennessee. Clarence Pittman, their tailback, who's not too far away from the 100-yard mark here tonight. And Dimitri Veal made the stop. And Mondre Dickerson and Omari Hand just keeping each other pumped up. Another look, Terrence. Pittman had a, a really good first half, but Going to find it difficult to run on Tennessee here in the second half. This football team has found new life. Second down and seven. He got three on it. Ball at the 23 of Rutgers. Cubit wants to throw. Fires in the flat. Complete. Knocked out of bounds at the 26-yard line is Ray Pilch. Who's had, uh, that's his third catch of the night coming out of the backfield. Eddie Moore and Mark Jones made the stop defensively for Tennessee. Tennessee with good coverage down the field and good job of coming up. Really nothing there for the Rutgers wide receiver. There's Pilch, three catches, 27 yards on the night. He's the fullback coming out of the backfield on those catches. Rutgers spreads the field this time. Five receivers, three at the top of your screen, two at the bottom. And the lone man in the backfield of the shotgun is the quarterback, Cubit. Pumps, fires, almost intercepted, but complete. Tennessee had a pretty good defensive scheme going that time. It picked up four yards. Not quite enough for a first down. The receiver, and he has been a thorn tonight for Tennessee. L.J. Smith, the tight end, once again. Tennessee playing Tennessee defense. 
Good pressure up the middle and good coverage in the secondary by Mark Jones. Rashad Baker drops back. He was shy of a first down by, oh, maybe a yard and a half, so they will not take a chance. And Mike Barr will be, uh oh, well, they did take a chance. What do you think, Terrence? Would you have gambled? <laughs> I don't know if I would have gambled with Tennessee playing as well as they are on defense, but if you're Rutgers, you, you feel the momentum starting to swing and you're trying to give your team as many, any opportunity that you can. I guess if you're a 41-point underdog, why not? So yep. they did take the chance and were successful. I didn't expect it. I don't think Tennessee did, but they reacted well enough to keep it from breaking into the secondary. But Rutgers retains possession. Here is the give once again to the tailback, Pittman. He's dancing. He's avoiding tackles. Tennessee missed a couple of tackles before they finally bring him down. Clarence Pittman is brought down by Ed Kendrick. And I think Tennessee may have missed four tackles on this play. And I think Robert Peace may have been the first one to get there. No, excuse me, Mark Jones, and there's Peace. Pittman's just an elusive running back. Ball is on the 39-yard line. They need to go to the 41 for a first down. So they're a couple of yards away, and it's second and two. Rutgers not about to fold. Tennessee came back in the second half and they scored a couple of touchdowns, but the Rutgers team certainly came in here not in awe. I tell you what, these guys play a tough, tough schedule. They have still on their schedule Virginia Tech, Miami, Syracuse, Boston College. And I was looking at, at the uh, Big East Conference before, prior to the football game, and you've got two teams there in Virginia Tech and Miami that's in the top ten. You've got Pittsburgh, Boston College. There's some really, really good football teams in the Big East Conference. By the way, Pittman, we said he was approaching 100. He's five yards shy. He's got 20 carries for 95 yards. And Johnny Chavis trying to figure out a defense that will stop this Rutgers team right here. It looked like they had him stopped. Rutgers went for it, gambled on fourth, picked up a little over a yard, and kept the chains moving. Here's Pittman dancing into the middle, and he may have the first down. He needed a couple. It looks like he got maybe up a little beyond that. Keon Whiteside made the stop, but it's enough for a first down. And so, Pittman's a good enough back, Bob. He's elusive enough yeah. and so quick. He's able to find those small seams, and he's through it before Tennessee knows it. Big edge for Rutgers in the first downs, as you saw the graphic on your screen there. But you also see Tennessee leading 21 to 14, but Rutgers driving with the football. Hubert throwing sideline pattern incomplete. Intended for Aaron Martin. Tennessee defended that one pretty well. And you said good coverage by Jabari Greer. And this is a dangerous pass. But Martin almost comes up with the play. Tennessee's Rashad Baker came up limping on that. And he has gone off the field. He went off under his own power, but he was slightly favoring the left leg. Jam up at the backfield. Clarence Pittman is going to be smothered. Dimitri Veal, Omari Hand. As you said, played well by Dimitri and Veal. Good job of getting off the block. Nowhere for Pittman to go. Hand and Veal just kind of close him in, box him in. It's been Veal, Veal's best game, I think, of the year. been uh, very consistent in the middle and he's pumped up too trying to fire up his teammates there he is big Dimitri Veal ball is on the 41 yard line it's third down and 12 you know they're gonna throw they do incomplete in the hands of the receiver and dropped threw it between two Tennessee defenders and Aaron Martin couldn't hold on to it I think Martin's trying to keep his feet in bounds. And I don't think even if he catches this ball, I don't think he's going to pick up the first down. 
Thought he'd be about a half yard shy and going out of bounds. They would have probably gambled on that, but they will not gamble on this because they need 12 yards. Mark Jones will be back now. We said Baker limped off, remember? Their punt return man. And so Mark Jones has gone in to receive the kick, which is not deep. It's very high, and it's going to take a Rutgers bounce. Otherwise, it would have been a very poor kick. Turns out to be a pretty good one, though, with a, about a 20-yard bounce. Tennessee's offense will now take over, and let's see if they're still in sync. They were not in the first half, but they have been here in the third quarter. 5.51 remaining in the third quarter. Tennessee up 21 to 14. You're watching CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. Tennessee back on offense. Jonathan Wade, a true freshman, is in for Tennessee. Pittman, by the way, now has got 97 yards carrying. Tennessee, 13 carries for 51 yards. Here's the pass out of the flat complete. Up to the just shy of the 30-yard line goes Derek Tinsley. And a good call by Randy Sanders getting the ball in the, in the Tinsley's hands. And good blocking downfield by, by Jonathan Wade. But I tell you, they are, there's some pads popping out here on the football field tonight. Well, that's what it sounds like when you're down, getting down and dirty with them. <laughs> First down and 10 to go. Tinsley had a big catch for a touchdown early. Here is a delayed handoff a trap in the middle Ooh, Troy Fleming had he not stumbled might have still been running but there is a flag down and it's back here which leads you to believe it might be against the balls I think it may be on Kelly Washington blocking downfield it is going against Tennessee let's see if we can see where the hole comes from just a little draw set up to Fleming good blocking by the Tennessee Holy offensive line on the offense 10 yard penalty and it looks Down like remains first looks like Munoz may be guilty of a hole. Number 77. Well, there's the march off. Stops the clock at 518 remaining in the third quarter. Tennessee 21 to 14. There's been a lot of question with Tennessee run up the score tonight. Well, right now they'd be satisfied just to get out of here and call it a night. It has first half was terrible for the balls. They played a lot better in the second half, but not very good right there as Fleming is stood up and rocked. Ryan Neal, the right defensive end. Also linebacker Jeremy Campbell in on the tackle for the Scarlet Knights. There's Big Neal. I think Rutgers really getting after Tennessee on defense. If Rutgers you, University, by the way, is the University of New Jersey. I don't know if everyone's quite aware of that. You almost, when you hear Rutgers, you think maybe it's a private school, but it is the state university. It's a big school. They have an enrollment of over 30,000 students. 45-minute train ride from New York City. Casey Clausen out in the right flat. It's complete. Derek Tinsley, there's the big play guy, and he got his first down. By a couple of yards. Boy, he's exciting. Dwayne Thompson made the stop. But number 20 brings the crowd to its feet. He's excited. He got a lot of reps this week trying to get football in his hands. Good block there by Jason Witten. And the more you get the football into Derek Tinsley's hands, the more confidence he's going to develop. I'd say come right back to him right here. I tell you, Tennessee's really clicking when they have the ball in either Washington or Tinsley's hands. Three receivers at the bottom of the screen, one at the top. Casey will go in the shotgun. There's Tinsley. Casey looks, fires out there. Complete to Kelly Washington. And Washington is up across midfield into Rutgers territory to about the 46-yard line. Jeremy Campbell and Nate Jones. A couple of uh, linebacker and cornerback made the stop for Rutgers. We've seen Tennessee go to out here to Washington because of his athletic ability, 
he's the kind of guy that can take this play and turn it into a big play. And he got up after the play and mo motioned to the sideline telling Randy Sanders, get me the football. Well, he can't get it right now. He's on the sideline, but Tennessee's got three receivers set left, one to the right. Lawson goes under center on this one and rolls left. Looks, fires, incomplete. Intended for Tony Brown, who's been very quiet tonight. In fact, I believe that's the first, first pass to Tony. Tony running a corner route, but he, he doesn't give himself enough field. You need to work the DB toward the inside of the field. Give yourself some room so the quarterback will have a throw in lane. And those are some of the mistakes those young wide receivers make. And that comes with playing time, and they're just not there yet. That's a good, good example, Terrence, of what they talk about when they say they're not quite ready with their patterns yet. And another thing is when a young wide receiver comes out of his cuts, you have to have separation. These guys are just coasting out of their cuts, not really getting any separation. Here's Clausen going long. It's going to be a battle. Flag interference against Rutgers. C.J. Payton, the intended receiver, and Dwayne Thompson draped all over him. C.J. Payton with his first pass pattern of the night, or at least first throw to him. He's a freshman. By the way, Kelly Washington now has five catches for 128 yards. Boy, does he all in pass the second the half. Against the defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. And boy, does he make it look easy. One of the things that Cosiano was concerned with about his football team, he said in the first three ball games that they were susceptible to the deep throw. And Tennessee is taking advantage of their secondary with deep throws. Balls moving with the football. They have been effective in the second half after a very ineffective offense and defense performance in the first half. In the shotgun. Kelly being rushed, fires long for the corner of the end zone, incomplete, intended for Kelly Washington, who ran out of room down there. Pass led him a little too far. Bangs into the padding down there, but he's okay. One-on-one -on -one coverage with Washington, just a go route. And a good play by Rutgers. Nate Jones, who had that opening kickoff return, is the man who was defending him. The ball is on the 31 yard line. It is now a second down and 10 to go for Tennessee. Tennessee fans have been wanting the balls to air it out and they're beginning to do that here in the second half. Going with the deep ball three receivers set left one to the right. They go to the right. It is complete to Payton. Payton is down across the 25 to the 24 yard line before he's stopped by Nate Jones. Bob, we've seen Tennessee run, use this play time and time again. I really think this play is more effective if Clawson throws this ball out there a little quicker. Tom Mattingly is spotting for us here tonight. Got on his lucky jacket there. I don't know what color you call that. It's a, just a sort of a rust job. C.J. Payton beginning to be a factor here, a freshman. Lawson needs to get confidence in these receivers and they catch the football. He will get confidence. This time it bounces off someone and it's incomplete. Bounces off the referee or the umpire. Washington <laughs> looking a little disgusted with that. There's the umpire who's right in the middle of things. And he's part of the football field, so nothing to be done about Right off that. the old noggin. So Tennessee now. Looking at a fourth down situation and three, and they're probably going to kick. Alex Walls is in. We think they will kick. Ball is going to be spotted on the 31 yard line, a 41 yard effort. It's up there and it is short. Did somebody get a piece of it? No. no I don't think did. so. This kid just has no confidence in his leg. Remember, he had 91 extra points in a row, then wound up missing one. He's missed, what, this is, I guess, three field goals. Is that? 
and he, and a couple he blocked and then a miss. This would be the fourth one, I guess. He has a quad injury, and this kid just has no confidence in his leg. Just not getting anything on the football. You see how soft he approached that one? I, I would agree. And if I'm Tennessee, I'll start to work on another field goal kicker because you've got a run of Arkansas, Alabama, and Georgia coming up. Boy, Tennessee is in for a stretch drive here. Unbelievable. Rutgers taking over a short gain. Coming in is Arkansas. Then they go to Georgia. Then Alabama comes in. Then they go to South Carolina. And quite frankly, all of those teams, three of them, can be very good, and South Carolina is probably getting better. And I, you, you know that all of those teams, when they play Tennessee, will play their best football. Second down and eight yards to go for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Cubit looking, throwing long, incomplete on the bounce, intercepted. Right side. Touchdown. No. Yes, they're going to give it to him. But for a second, they might say he went out at the one-inch line, but no, the official race down there had said, I'm going to give you 10 points just for the dive. <laughs> Keon Whiteside with his second interception of the football game, always around the football. But he had help. This was on a ricochet, and we'll take a look at it again and see who got the hand on it first. But this is part of good coaching. Tip ball, drill, ball in the air. Good play by Whiteside, always around the football. And hey, he may want to go out for the dive team at Tennessee. <laughs> Did we have a flag down here? Let's Roughing the passer on the defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. Well, we did. There's Coach Ciano. He's trying to get the information from the sidelines, as we are. Ball is brought all the way out to the 41-yard line. Well, and I'm not sure if we have that on replay. Well, Coach Ciano said we finally get a call. He's argued two calls he felt like went in Tennessee's favor, and, and they get a good one, a big one that negates a touchdown. So Tennessee's high point now becomes a low point after a late roughing the passer call nullifies Keon Whiteside's play. Eddie Moore makes the stop of Clarence Pittman. Eddie Moore was fired up on that one. Look at him shoot through here and make this play. Showing great speed. And they fake the reverse, and Eddie Moore is not fooled at all. Does a good job of playing the football and keeps his feet moving through the tackle. So on the white side play, that flag must have dropped what, Tom? Well after the touchdown, didn't it? <laughs> They called roughing the passer on Tennessee, and Keon Whiteside's great, great play was nullified. And, well, you see the result right there. Rutgers with the football and with the penalty in pretty good field position. Here's the play out in the flat and incomplete. Tennessee all over this one. Ray Pilch hit by Jabari Greer. And there's going to be a personal foul, I think, on Julian Battle for roughing the passer. He hit. Cubit well after the ball was thrown. Well, there it is. So we've had two roughing the passer penalties that have been costly here for Tennessee. One that nullified a touchdown. Holding on the offense, 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Down remains second. I'm sorry, I made the wrong call. Well, you made a good try <laughs> anyway, but it turned out that it was against Rutgers University and so they will march it back, and Tennessee gets a little bit of a break there. We thought it maybe it could have been a borderline situation, Terrence. You might have been close anyway. On the roughing the passer penalty against Tennessee, we apparently did not have that on our replay, and, but it did occur. Clarence Pittman running straight up the middle this time, and... Picking up a little bit of yardage before he is dropped by the men in orange. 
Robert Peace, number 41, leading the pack. There was so much excitement on the Keon Whiteside interception. I don't think anyone in the stands even had an idea that a flag had been dropped, and it had to be dropped quite late because both sides had seemed to accept the, the touchdown. That ticks down the end of the third quarter of play here. And so it is still a football game, folks. It is still a football game. 21 to 14, Tennessee leading the Scarlet Knights. Rutgers with the football and moving. So hang on for the fourth quarter on CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. All right, Tennessee's defense has to rise to the occasion. They did, but then a penalty nullified a touchdown, and so they're still very much in a fight. I mean a real fight. If you would like to receive a free Tennessee Volunteers mouse pad, email us at css at cable.comcast.com. And please give us your name and address, and we will send you a mouse pad being the nice folks we are. All right, 15 minutes of football to go in Neyland Stadium. Crowd just a shade over 103,000 on an absolutely perfect weather night. Hard to believe that one week ago we were in a quagmire here against Florida, but tonight it couldn't be more perfect. There's the schedule. Arkansas here. They go on the road to Georgia. Georgia's won the last two games against the Vols. Alabama comes in. Alabama defensively as good as anybody right now in the conference. South Carolina down in Columbia, that is always a tough trip. Now those are just the conference games and then you saw that Miami game coming up. Here's Pittman trying to slide outside, not much room there. Tennessee closed it down rather nicely. Robert Peace was the first man there. Three yard gain, it's gonna be now a fourth down situation and Rutgers will have to punt the football. Tennessee gets it back. After looking like they had taken a pretty comfortable situation with a white side move, all of that was nullified with the late flag and the roughing the passer call. And so Tennessee is still in a situation where they need to score some more points right here to get any kind of a comfortable situation. Not a great point. It goes out of bounds at the 32 yard line. And so Tennessee will take over at that point. There's Randy Sanders talking with his quarterback and will tell him how to start this series on offense. And Johnny I, Chavis working on the sidelines also tonight, the defensive coordinator. And I really expected to see C.J. Leak get quite a few plays in this ball game, but it's been so close. Tennessee hadn't had an opportunity to play some of the second teamers. No, they've gone to some of the second teamers and maybe in the receiver department you might say to some of the third teamers but not not very deep in other areas especially on the lines of scrimmage and the linebacker here is Clawson being really racked as he turns the ball loose intended for Washington he got up and it was one of those tackles that kind of bend you in a real awkward position but he he's okay Third quarter stats, Rutgers still with the edge in the first downs and the rushing, but Tennessee comes up big in the passing department in the third quarter and a slight edge in total. Look at the time of possession, though. It's still very much tilted in Rutgers' favor. Volunteers with three receivers set on the right side this time, one on the left. Clawson in the shotgun, in the flat. And it's complete out to Derek Tinsley as they tried to get him in a position of one on one. But Rutgers played it pretty well and he gets four yards. And a good open field tackle by Sean Seabrook, the former Tennessee Vault. We see him throw this little bubble screen out to Tinsley and Seabrook does a good job of playing it. I'm sorry, Nate Jones. My... Seabrook right behind him as a backup, but Jones made the stop. Not only has he had the big touchdown run tonight on the opening kickoff, but he's played very well defensively. He's been in on a number of key plays for Rutgers. Third down and six for Tennessee. So here comes a key down. 
Lawson looking, firing complete to Jason Witten, and it should be enough for a first down with a couple of yards to spare. Ball out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Aaron Krause, strong safety, made the stop, but not until Witten had got his first down. They line Kelly Washington up to the inside, to this side of the field. He draws a lot of attention. That leaves one-on-one -on -one for Witten with the defensive back, who's he, who he's going to dwarf every time. Ball is on the 45-yard line. There's Jason. A couple of catches tonight. Tennessee in a four receiver set. They've got three at the top, one at the bottom. On their screen, they hand it off to the tailback, Derek Tinsley, and there's nothing doing. The stop is made by Brian Bender, right side linebacker. I tell you, Rutgers linebackers, their group of linebackers are very active. They make some plays. Second down now. And they need about two or 13 yards. They've got to go all the way to the 45-yard line of Rutgers for a first down. There's Bender. Lawson goes in that shotgun. He's got three receivers set on his left, one to the right. He's looking right all the way, and that's the man he's got. This is Kelly Washington, and Kelly Washington scores a touchdown. Let's hold everything and see if there's any flag anywhere in this county. I don't see one. I don't hear a report of one. So it covers 58 yards. And I guess you could call this a coming out party for Kelly Watson. Well, he's way past 200 yards now in receptions. Philip Newman will try the extra point. So they are going to change. Clarence, Clarence, you were right. You probably have looked at him in the eye and said, maybe there's a confidence factor now. Alex Walls has missed a couple, and this one is up, and it's good. There's Kelly Washington. Six catches, 186 yards. An awesome day. And this is just throw and catch by... Washington and Claus and kind of good coverage outside by Rutgers, but the guy slips and you can't slip against Kelly Washington. He'll make you pay. You know, they list him as 225, but he looks even bigger than that. He's got thighs, legs like a middle linebacker. He calls himself the future. Big, physical, strong, fast wide receiver and a definite hunger for the game of football. Well, Tennessee goes out 28 to 14 now. Remember, they had one touchdown that was nullified on a white side interception because of a roughing the passer flag that was thrown. And now they come back and get this one. This was a big play, folks, a big play. This is Washington's second best receiving night. Six for 186. If they leave him in, he'll top 200 without any problem. I played with the number 15 that used to take over a football game in a similar way. Carl Pickens and just get him the football, get him a move, and he's in the end zone. You're watching Tennessee football on CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. You know, a lot of credit belongs to Rutgers here tonight. We've been talking about, especially in the first half, Tennessee playing rather poorly. But the Rutgers team came in well prepared, and they played well defensively in losing to Pittsburgh last week. Had some tough breaks in that ball game, so they've been sort of coming together. I'm not saying they're a great football team, but I, I'm saying they came in here determined to play hard, not in awe of the crowd, not in awe of Tennessee. And you've got to give them some credit for this performance. I, I would agree with you. I think they came in early and took shots against Tennessee, gave themselves a chance to be in this football game. Nate Jones, this time, I think wisely decides not to come out of the end zone. And we have the official exchange a few words there. There must have been a little on the humorous side, both laughing. But it will be brought out to the 20-yard line. And at that point, they take over the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. They led 14 to 7 at the half and had this crowd just absolutely almost silent in the uh, 
fading minutes of the first half especially. You wonder if Cupid on that scramble, Bob, he gets in the end zone. You wonder if this is a different football game with Rutgers going up. Yep, remember the time ran out with Rutgers on the half yard line at the end of the first half. Here's the pass way off the mark. Brian Boer was in the tight end in the neighborhood, but it was way off the uh, mark. And Cubit just gets pounded by Edward Kinder. Let's take a look at the schools in the preseason top 10 that have already lost. Pretty impressive list. And we haven't even reached October yet. We will be seeing more stunners down the line. Here's handoff delay in the backfield. Willie Miles came up and really creamed Clarence Pittman. There's Beal again. He's played a great football game. He tonight. has Willie and a good job Beal. of getting pressure by the Tennessee defense and a good stick by Willie Miles. You, you really have to like the way this football team has bounced back, how they come out in the, in the second half and taken the fight to Rutgers, really dominated all of the second half. Oh, Willie Miles really put his head in there, didn't he? 11.42 remaining, Tennessee 28 to 14. Rutgers with the football, third and 12. They spread the field with five receivers. In the shotgun, Tennessee puts pressure on and Tennessee broke it up. They have put too much pressure on Eddie Moore. Maybe called for pass interference. Eddie Moore may have had his right hand in early, but Coach Chiano may have had something to do with it. He was right behind the line judge screaming at him. This is a Southeastern Conference crew, but. Pass interference against the defense. Penalty is enforced at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. We, if you joined us late, Kevin Simon went out with a leg injury. We don't know if it was a knee or an ankle. Tennessee's usually very quiet about those things on the sidelines. They don't reveal anything until after a ball game, but it does not, did not look good when he left the field. Robert Peace has replaced him and has played very well. Cuban in pressure. And going to be knocked down. Three volunteers were involved in it. Demetri Thiel, Paris Harrelson, two of them, and also Gabriel Wilson. All three had a hand in it. I tell you, Demetri and Thiel needs to buy Paris Harrelson a, a hamburger after this game because he sets up this sack. Takes Cupid's feet from under him. He struggles to hold on to the football, and Demetri and Thiel comes up with a big sack. This is set up by Paris Harrelson. Nowhere to go for Cuba. Tennessee's third sack. This one is for minus 14 yards. So it is 23 yards to go for a first down now. Hand off to Clarence Pittman, trying to maybe fool Tennessee a bit, but they didn't. It got only three yards. Demetrian Veal, once again, Demetrian is kind of heading toward MVP honors the way things are going right now. <laughs> Kelly Washington would have a say in that, though, and you got to give Casey Clausen a lot of credit because he got the ball to Washington. And to Jason Witten on a big play. Keon Whiteside had a couple of big interceptions tonight. One of them was nullified by a penalty, but he's had a couple of great plays. Cubit. They try that little delay in the middle and then fake it to him, and then Cubitt keeps it on a nice fake outside, and Rashad Baker made the stop. He was one of the few men who didn't bite on it, and it's far, far short of a first down. They tried a little trickery right there, and it wasn't a bad, wasn't a bad call, but there is a flag down across the field about the 23-yard line. Not a bad call at all, but Cubitt's not the best running quarterback. Just not able to pick Holding it up. on the offense. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. Uh, of course, they're going to decline that one because it brings up a fourth down and long situation. At least nine yards to go for a first. And 
pretty deep in your own territory. There will be no fake this time. They did go for it once on a fourth down and made it, but not this time. 28 to 14. Tennessee holding on to the lead. Should get it in great field position. Mark Jones is back. Baker is another player who left this game earlier limping slightly for Tennessee. So Mark Jones has been fielding punts here in the second half. He got a little bit of a crack there and a little daylight and got it up to about the 38-yard line before he's driven out of bounds. So the Vol offense will come on the field and take over with nine minutes and 32 seconds to go in this football game. You're watching Tennessee football from Neyland Stadium on CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. Scott Wells over the ball at center. And Tennessee now with a four receivers in the pattern this time. Three left, one right. Lawson pass in the flat, incomplete. Intended for Derek Tinsley. Again, they wanted to get Tinsley in sort of the open field on hopefully a one on one situation, but Rutgers pretty well swarmed that one and had everything covered. There's number 20, Derek Tinsley. He's had a couple of exciting plays here tonight, and as the season progresses, I think we're going to see him more and more. Terrence into the flow of things, don't you? I think Tennessee has found that it has two playmakers in Kelly Waston and Derek Tinsley, and they can build around that. And Jason Witten's starting to come on also. Well, there's a good shot of the Iceman, they call him, Casey Clawson. In the shotgun, sticks it in the stomach of his tailback. Turns out to be a great play as Troy Fleming rambles all the way down to the Rutgers 45 yard line. A good call by Tennessee, good blocking up front. You and I could run through that hole holding hands. And Troy Fleming doing a good job, Bob, of holding on to the football. Two hands on it in track. Some people questioned, and Terrence and I might have been two of them, uh, giving it to Fleming to start the Florida ball game. But he has proven tonight that that probably wasn't a bad idea because he can move the football. There he was on the sidelines and has done a good job tonight. Didn't move it against Florida, but who did? Michael Munoz may have moved again. I believe that's the second time tonight Michael has made a little movement there. And Michael will have some. Snap. False start on the offense. Five yard penalty. Down the man first. And Michael will have some extra sprints to run after practice. Offensive coordinator Randy Sanders instituted a new policy that if you have done mistakes or penalties, you're going to run sprints after practice. That would be extra sprints. I think they already run sprints. <laughs> Ball just shy of midfield by about half a yard. First down and 15 to go for Tennessee now with a five yard penalty. Lawson in the gun. Firing. A little too high. Almost intercepted. Intended for Derek Tinsley. But that one kind of got away from Casey. Good protection by the Tennessee offensive line. And just a little high. You're right. I think it floated on Casey and almost came. Uh, Rutgers almost came up with the interception. Ball just floats on him a little bit. Safety coming up. Uh, that was Jarvis Johnson, the strong safety, and he almost had his hands on it. Now Tennessee looks at second and 15, and Clawson remains in the shotgun with a four receiver set. Got a little time, now it's breaking down. Still looking, and the throw it downfield, just kind of lobbing, hoping his receiver could run under it. Jonathan Wade, and a little too much on it. It goes out of bounds incomplete. Good job by Casey of I avoiding think, the sack. I think he wanted Wade to keep going downfield. I think he wanted Wade and Wade pulled up and I think Clawson uh, thought if he kept going he could have hit him. You bring up a good point as a wide receiver. What you do in a scramble <laughs> drill is when you get to the sideline you turn up 
and keep going. And that's just some of Wade's inexperience waiting on the football. True freshman Wade is out of the state of Louisiana. Those things will come to him in time. Three receivers left, one to the right. Tennessee wants to throw. They need 16 yards. It's third down. They throw to Kelly Washington. Washington's going to come up shy of a first down. And the crowd is going to want them to go for it, and I'm going to think they might. Washington says, somebody help me up. Be nice to me. <laughs> <laughs> Nate Jones is the guy who made the stop. They go with the quick game out to Washington. He's turned this into two big plays, but Nate Jones plays it well. I tell you, Nate Jones is giving Kelly Washington a lot of cushion. So it's going to be a fourth down and four, and Tennessee is going to talk about it. There's Kelly's numbers, three yards shy of 200. And all of this has come in the second half, by the way, all of it. You're right, because they only threw to him one time in the first half. That's right. Tune in next Monday for another great night of Tennessee football at 7 o'clock Eastern. It's the Philip Fulmer Show, followed by the re-air of Tennessee and Arkansas at 8. Then at 11 o'clock, we've got classic Tennessee football on Vintage Orange. That's right here on CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. Arkansas Razorbacks will be in here next Saturday night. 7.45 is the start time for that Eastern time. There's Philip Fulmer showing some intensity on the sidelines. It has not been an easy night for his Balls. They were favored by over 40 points. They're leading by two touchdowns with 7.56 remaining. And here comes a big fourth down and four, and they have decided not to go for it. Dustin Colquitt is going to be back in midfield and try to kind of pooch one down there. Now I think Rutgers is called a timeout. So that gives Tennessee a little more time to think about it. They may rethink the situation. The crowd wants them to go for it, but the crowd is not calling it. I, 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 the crowd wants them to go for it, but I think if you're Philip Fulmer, Philip Fulmer's still coaching at this point. He's trying it to get an opportunity to, as you say, get a push kick and, and put him back on the goal line. This is Tennessee football on CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. Two punts tonight for Dustin Colquitt. So he's averaging 51.5 on those two kicks. Already leading the conference, as Terrence pointed out earlier, and high up in the national rankings. I think 48 yards is leading the country right now, so Dustin's going to be getting close to that. This will hurt his average a little bit, I would think, because he probably will sort of try to Put this one up rather high and keep it from going into the end zone. He's going to stand at the midfield mark, and he kicks it a mile high. But it's going to hit about a yard deep into the end zone. He had the right idea. That's about That brought raindrops, didn't it? That as, was above a, the roof of the stadium here. As I said, give the young punter an opportunity to see if he can pin Rutgers back deep. 38 yards is what that punt officially will go in the books as. Luciano of Rutgers, who's paced the sidelines, almost got bumped by the official there. Made a nice move to get out of the way. Rutgers takes over, trailing by a couple of touchdowns, and still got seven minutes and 46 seconds to go. It's not in the books yet for Tennessee. They're still fighting and clawing this Rutgers team. Cubit back to throw, throws in the flat, complete. Going to be about five yard gain. Ray Pilch is fullback. Omar Gaither is the man who hit him. Pilch slightly limping, coming back, but he's a tough guy. He's, he is coming to the sidelines, though, now. But they're probably taking him out, not because of the limping, they're just getting another receiver in there. You know, it's funny that you bring up that. You remember in the first half, L.J. Smith was all we talked about. We had, they all don't think they've thrown him the football here in the second half. He had a great first half, the tight end for 
Rutgers, they've got five receivers in the pattern. Tennessee rushed him and almost picked it off. Gabriel Wilson almost had him a touchdown right there. It looked like the Tennessee defender here looked like he might have pulled up at the last second. Dad, no, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Julian Battle. A good shot there by Julian Battle. And Julian almost, was just planting him is what he was doing. <laughs> almost interception by B Jabril Wilson. I think that's his second pick he almost had tonight. Two there slipped through his hands. Keep trying, Gabriel. One will come your way. Seven minutes remaining in the ball game. Tennessee 28 to 14. It is third and five. Big down. Tennessee hit him as he threw, and it passes incomplete. Rutgers wanted pass interference. They will not get it. That happened about two feet from Philip Fulmer. I would not have thrown a flag there. Aaron Martin was the intended receiver. He was very well covered. And good coverage, as you said, by Jabari Greer on a big third down. So the Scarlet Knights will have to turn it over now, and Tennessee will get it in pretty good field position. Mark Jones will back up. Backing up to about the 35 yard line. We've had two injuries tonight. We don't know yet the full extent of one was to Kevin Simon. And the other one was to Rashad Baker. Here's the kick. Jones going to settle under it and catch it. And not fair catch it at all. And it's Crowd and what a great return. Andrew Rutgers territory all the way down to the 44 yard line. Tremendous return. Gutty, gutty play by Jones. There were two defenders within a couple of feet of him. Look, there you go. Almost two Tennessee defenders in the same area. You don't want that, but this is what you want. Mark Jones taking the football and getting straight up field. Well, he got after a punt of 42 yards. 24 yards on the return. And we have a player down. It's Brian Wilson down on the ground for Rutgers. It looks like they may be working on his shoulder. Tennessee will be in great field position, operating with 639 remaining in the ball game in Rutgers territory at the 44 yard line. CSS is the place to be for SEC football this Wednesday, first at 4.30 Eastern. We've got the re-air of Mississippi State and LSU. Then at 8 o'clock, tune in for South Carolina and Vanderbilt. That's right here on CSS. It is your source for sports in the Southeast. Good to see Brian Wilson up and walking off under his own control. This half, Rutgers has 46 yards on five possessions. So you can pretty well say the Tennessee defense arrived in the second half. So, Clawson, do you keep it on the ground now, or do you try to get some more points up there for insurance? Rashad Baker in the football game down here at the bottom of your screen at That's wide receiver. Good. So Baker, who went out earlier and who has not been returning punts, that was intended for Baker, has back, come back in the ball game. So we know his injury now is not severe. He has not returned the last, what, three punts. But he did come in there as a receiver. And that's been experimented with some in practice. Uh, don't be surprised if you see that many more times this year. And they also experimented this week with James, James Banks at the wide receiver position but haven't been able to work him in. We haven't seen Gerald Riggs tonight either. Here is uh, tailback picking up a first down. Nice carry that time by Tinsley. Derek Tinsley got 11 yards and a first down. Good blocking up front by the Tennessee offensive line. Good lead block there by Jabari Davis. I like the way Tinsley runs. He runs with a purpose. Protects that football too. You see both hands close in on it when he starts to get hit. First down and ten. Tennessee staying on the ground. 
Pitching it back to Tinsley. Tinsley down to the 30-yard line before he's driven down by Alfred Peterson, the left end. Peterson, 6'3", 270. Tinsley has to be taken out of the game right now. And they go with the sweep to Tinsley, and just not a whole lot there. Rutgers strings it out and able to make the play. Tinsley took a pretty good shot, and looks like he might have something. Either got stuck a finger in his eye, or maybe he might have a contact problem, but he's gone to the sidelines, and now so has Casey Clawson with a timeout. 5.35 remaining in this football game. Tennessee has never been comfortable. They trailed at halftime, 14-7. to They've come back and had a very decent second half, but still leaded by only two touchdowns. Email us at css at cable.comcast.com to find out when your favorite team will be on CSS. Please indicate the teams that you are interested in, and we will email you every week with your team's upcoming schedule. Another service from CSS. Well, Bobby, if you're Tennessee, you have a lot of work to do before the Arkansas game. The second half has been a positive, something to build on, but when you're picked by 41 points at home and you're still fighting in the fourth quarter to put this ball game away, there's still a question mark above your football team. I don't think this performance would have beaten Arkansas tonight. Let's put it like that. Second down. Eight yards to go for a first. Still 535. We've had the dreaded ugly wave sweep through the stadium. Here. Here's the give to the tailback. And there's nothing doing. Jabari Davis just jammed up at the line. Raheem Orr and Alfred Peterson. Defending for Rutgers. If you're Tennessee, you want to put this football in the end zone, but you want to be careful. You don't want to have a turnover and Rutgers take it back for a touchdown. So they're being very cautious, a little conservative. Well, if anything, he lost a half a yard or so. So make it third down and about eight. Ball at the 31 yard line of Rutgers. Absolutely. In the middle, in, uh, almost intercepted, incomplete, and then almost intercepted. C.J. Faith was the intended receiver. Right through his hands, and <laughs> almost an interception, and there was no one out there to stop him if he comes up with this football. Faith probably should have caught this one. Let's take a look and see if he should have. Thrown uh, a little, little bit behind him. A little yeah. behind him, but you still need to come up with that football. Lawson's missed his last five passes, by the way. Ball on the 31-yard line now. It's a fourth down and eight situation, and Tennessee wants to talk about this to see what they do. I know you punt, you don't gain anything much here. If you punt it in the end zone, it would be brought back out to the 20. So... Why not go for it? They took a delay of game there to give Dustin Coke with a little more room to work with, and I think they're still trying to work on the pooch punt that you talked about on the prior kick. Colquitt is out there. And there comes the delay that Terrence mentioned, marched off. Now they set it down on the 36-yard line. Colquitt will stand right at midfield. Rutgers has no one back. They're coming after it, I think. Well, they've got everybody up, and here they come. But he gets his kick away. It's high. And into the zone. Kid just got too much leg to poop. To he poop just, yeah, he's just too strong. <laughs> But can't you know, be soft with it. <laughs> and you know, Phil Former said this week, it's really good to see Colquitt develop as a punter this year. He said, as a coach, it's good to see 
a player developed like Dustin's developing. He's a real weapon for Tennessee. Rutgers has a man down back here at the 41 yard line and the trainers are out working on him. It looks like it might be cramps. Leg cramps. He... Yeah, I think that's what it is. I don't think it's anything serious. But the clock shows 441 to go and the crowd begins to file out now figuring that Tennessee has hung on here for uh, some sort of a victory favored by 41. They've got a 14 point lead right now and I don't think anybody's going to be satisfied with this uh, Terrence. I don't think they, they'll be satisfied because you, of course, you expected Rutgers, I mean, Tennessee to dominate the game because I know some of the talk this week was that Rutgers was probably one of the worst football teams in Division 1A. You know, even maybe a, Wyoming might have been better than Rutgers. Still working on the uh, Rutgers player. Now they pull up a pad, so might possibly be a knee problem, but I... Earlier thought primarily was a cramp situation, but they're still working with him. Arkansas Razorbacks come to town and Tennessee better improve. I think they, they will. better improve offensively and defensively. They had an absolute terrible first half. They didn't move the ball at any consistency and the defense of all things kind of let them down in the, in the first half and they trailed in this football game they trailed Rutgers at the half 14 to 7. I think this team will bounce back and I think they'll come to play versus Arkansas. I think at halftime they fully realized that anyone that comes into this stadium can beat us if we're not playing football. I think I think they had a serious wake up call. If you would like to receive a free Tennessee volunteer mouse pad email us at CSS at cable dot com cast dot com we'll send you one here's a little flare Tennessee missed the tackle finally brings him down shy of the 10 yard line Clarence Pittman picks up four yards Corey Larkins was primarily responsible for the stop again we want to remind you about the free Tennessee volunteer mouse pad just email us at CSS at cable.comcast.com. Please give us your name, your address, and bingo, we will send you a mouse pad. Simple as that. In the shotgun, they hand it off in the middle, nothing doing there. The 3.54 to go. Rutgers, I guess, sort of hoping to catch Tennessee asleep and break one in the middle. Julian Battle. Julian Battle. Doesn't have any part of that. And Greg Jones, he just smothers that football play. So Tennessee on defense going well into their to their third team. Well, Greg Jones is one of those youngsters you should hear a lot about in the years ahead. Freshman, 6'6", 265. JT Mapu also in the ball game. Jason Hall is in the ball game. Tennessee gets a rush on the quarterback, gets his pass off incomplete. A little pressure on him that time. With 3.13 to go in the game, it stops the clock. Josh Hubbs was the intended receiver, flanker. And so the night seems to be about over as far as Rutgers is concerned. They're going to have to turn it over now with 3.13 to go. Terrence, what do you think happened here in the first half, especially of this football game? Why do you think the balls were so flat? I really believe this team still had a hangover from the Florida game. I really do. But I think they, they saw and they were embarrassed about how poorly they played in the first half and really went in at halftime and had a gut check and came out playing football. Mark Jones looking for somewhere. He's got somewhere. Down the sidelines. Still fighting. Still fighting. And finally has run out of bounds. What a gutty play by Mark Jones. Jarvis Johnson saved the touchdown. I'm leading the parade that, to determine that Mark Jones is our punt returner. I tell you, the kid takes the football and gets straight up the field. And he's fearless. They started the season with Rashad Baker as number one, and he as number two as far as punt returns are concerned. 45 yards on the punt and 38 yards on the return. 
We have a Tennessee player down at the 40 yard line and can't quite catch his number right here. They're working on the knee though. Looks like they're looking at the knee. Yeah. It may be Corey Larkins. Is it 23? Still can't quite see. 23 it looks like. And so that is who that is. Kevin Simon will be a big story after this ball game when they go to the dressing room and we find out Terrence the extent of his injury and if it is such that he can't play Tennessee is dwindling down to a precious few in the linebacker department you, you're right they lose Constantine Richmond early they lose Kevin Burnett uh, Kevin Simons goes out with what we believe to be an ankle injury. Campbell kid had to step out because of academic problems. It is Corey Larkins and he's getting up very gingerly will not let that left foot hardly touch the ground so it could be a knee. Let's, let's take a look at it. Let's see if we can pick it up on the return. I think he bumped knees with his own teammate. It looked like he did. So maybe he just has a bruised knee. Let's hope. Tennessee back on offense. Going for the jugular and intended for Kelly Washington. Pretty well covered by Rutgers. Kelly couldn't shake the defender that time. And so it stops the clock at 250. As I said, Nate Jones giving Kelly Washington plenty of cushion. If you're Tennessee, you want to go to Washington, go with that little five-yard quick route, get him to football, and I, I believe he can put it in the end zone. I think that was Chris Heath that bumped into Corey Larkins there on the punt return. Now you have to wonder if Tennessee, will, even though they've got a victory here tonight, if they'll drop in the polls a little bit. That's a good question. A lot of people didn't believe Tennessee should be the number 11 football team in the country after losing to Florida here at home last week. Run straight ahead with Cedric Houston. He's inside the 15. 2.41, the clock continues to run. 2.36 and ticking away. There is a flag down there. It would appear they finally do stop the clock at the 2.34 mark. They'll let a few seconds run off the clock, but not that that's important at this stage. After the play, personal foul. On the defense, half the distance to the goal, automatic, first down. Well, it's almost excusable for Rutgers players. They've played so hard tonight, and they're frustrated, and and you probably do maybe get in a little extra. It's Seabrooks, isn't it? I, you're right. I think it's Seabrook, and I think he, as a former ball, he wanted to come back in here. He felt like maybe in the first half they had a chance for the big upset, and I think he's a little frustrated. Well, if there's such a thing in victory in losing, I guess Rutgers has in some sense won a, some, some, something here tonight. They've certainly won the respect of a lot of the Tennessee players, I would think, and a lot of the Tennessee fans. Shiano huddles around his team with 225 remaining in the contest. Tennessee, a few of them have drifted over to talk with Randy Sanders and Philip Fulmer. Some are still out on the field. Clawson being told what to do here has gone all the way to quarterback. They, you know, we had these visions of, you know, getting a substitute in here, a substitute there, playing a lot of players who hadn't had a chance to play much, but that hasn't been possible tonight. Bulldog fans, tune in to CSS on Tuesday night for extensive coverage of Georgia football. At 8 o'clock Eastern, it's the re-air of New Mexico State and Georgia, followed by the Mark Rick Show at 11 o'clock. That's all right here on CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. Well, the band did have a great performance tonight at halftime. Cedric Houston at tailback. They give it to him. He gets inside the five to the four-yard line before Alfred Peterson made the stop. A couple of yards gained by the Tennessee tailback. So it'll be second down and goal uh, really at the four-yard line. As you said, Houston re-injured his leg last 
week against Florida, but wanted to come back into that football game. Had Jabari Davis in that time at uh, fullback leading the way. Davis, of course, plays both fullback and tailback. Started tonight's game in place of Houston. Houston with a slight injury carryover, but he's played pretty well, so the thigh bruise is obviously not bothering him to any degree. They sweep them to the end zone. It is Jabari Davis, number 34, the J-Train, gets into the end zone to make it a little more respectable for Tennessee at 34 to 14, and the try for extra point coming up. The J-Train on track, I tell you, a big back like this, he, he does a good job of stretching the defense. He finds a lane and brings all of his 232 pounds at the goal line. And I tell you, I wouldn't stop him. I, I'm going to get out of the way. No, he had a great second effort that time. We'll get another look at shortly. Philip Newman will attempt the extra point. It's up there, and it is good. And Tennessee leads 35 to 14. Let's take another look at the train. As I said, the sweep, he does a good job of stretching it. And most of it's done on individual effort. Just not going to be denied. Last couple of yards just belong to Jabari. Good blocking out front by Sean Young. And as you said, the end was Jabari Davis. Not going to be denied. So we got a minute and 41 seconds of football remaining here in Knoxville. And the fans who are still here, which is yeah, maybe two-thirds of them, saw Jabari Davis with a good goal line play. I think when you get inside the 10, it's pretty much always going to be Jabari Davis. I would agree with you. Why would you go with anybody else? Big back, he, he has some niftiness and some good speed. And when he gets running downhill, get out of the way. Rutgers will be receiving the kickoff. Scarlet Knights have fought hard, but they're going to come up short in their bid for a big upset. They did it against Tennessee in 79 and 83. It was a close ball game. Tennessee winning 13 to 7. Then Tennessee came back and won in 85. I believe that one was about 44 to nothing. 44 to zip, but and it's a situation here where you can, if you're a Rutgers fan, say it's been a pretty close ball game. They are trailing right now, 35 to 14. Tennessee just scored a couple of seconds. They were in number three. What a kickoff that was! Remember, Rutgers led at the half, 14 to seven. Nate Jones, he almost kicked that one out of the end zone. Newman has got a leg. And I think if I'm Tennessee, I turn the the kicking duties over to Philip Newman on field goals and, and extra points. Yes, Alex Walls, who has been a great, great contributor to Tennessee, has won a lot of football games for the Vols, but he's got a problem right now. And it probably goes back to the groin injury, but even if he's recovered, he's obviously got some kind of a mental block with it right now, and he's just not kicking well at all. So. I wouldn't be surprised to see Newman be inserted as number one in that position from here on. Cuban still fighting, still trying to pick up yardage and gets out to the 30-yard line. Robert Bullwear is the guy who made the stop. That's our first call of Bullwear tonight. So Tennessee does get some very young players in here for the last 134 of this contest. Bullwear, a Richard Freshman, he's 5'10", 185. 10 yards on the pickup. And enough for a first. Ball is right on the 30. Three receivers in the setup this time. Cubit back looking, firing, incomplete. Broken up by Gabriel Wilson. Brian Boer was the intended receiver. It was a catch. They gave him a catch on that. I, I thought it was hit the ground, but no, they say it was a catch. And a, and a good catch. And you and I talked about some of the things we felt like Tennessee had to do in this ball game, and one was to find leadership. 
And if they found leadership, then would come discipline and, and, and good fundamental football. And I think in the second half, they've been able to do that. Give it off to the tailback, and he's fighting for two or three yards before he goes down. Here comes the flag. And this one is going to be tossed twice, actually, by the official. Threw it, picked it up, threw it again. Gabriel Wilson did make the stop of Clarence Pittman, but there's a flag which was actually tossed in the Tennessee secondary base match. Let's see. Wilson, number eight, moving up. Let's see if he's the one. Nope. There was inadvertent. Five yard against the defense. It's enough for a first down. Inadvertent face mask. It cost them five yards. Inadvertent by Omar Gaither. But completely different from the face mask we saw in the first half where the defender brought the runner down. They yeah. drew 15. That will always, if you don't let go, they're going to attack you from 15. Gaither just sort of a glancing situation that time. But it keeps it alive here for Rutgers with 37 seconds to go. They've got five receivers set out this time. And they fire right into the hands of it. Josh Hobbs, but he couldn't hold on for 84. Dropped it. Stops the clock at 29 seconds. Arkansas, big Southeastern Conference matchup next week. Tennessee's got to go back to the drawing board and correct a few more mistakes. But I, I think I like the position that Tennessee's in because throw out the window to talk about the national championship and start to develop the mentality of going to work every day preparing for the game that's at hand. It was just a matter of execution tonight. That They haven't made many silly mistakes. They haven't had 12 men on the field. They haven't had a lot of personal foul penalties and delay of games and, and that sort of thing that they had last week that are just disciplinary penalties. For the most part, they've improved greatly. And, and didn't have the fumbles and the turnovers. Sean Carty was the intended receiver on that play, and that stops it with 24 seconds to go. Rutgers now will be a third and 10 situation. But Arkansas brings in very talented team. What a secondary they've got. It's maybe as good as any secondary in the nation. They've got three guys in the secondary that scouts say will play in the NFL. I would agree with you. Here's the delay to the tailback, and he's going nowhere. And <laughs> see, waiting for that one. Rutgers trying to kind of catch the balls, rushing, thinking they could get a man by that rush and maybe pick up some big yardage, but instead they dropped six yards on the play. And that's going to run it out. Three, two, one. Tennessee balls win. Maybe not the most beautiful victory of the year, but it's a victory. They have defeated Rutgers 35 to 14 after having trailed at the half 14 to 7. Coach Philip Fulmer and Coach Gianna and all the players shake hands at midfield. The Rutgers Scarlet Knights came down here and you got to give them a lot of credit. They were not awed. They were not phased by this crowd. And they played hard. And they had something going, certainly, for about, oh, a little over a half of this ball game. We'll be back here at Neyland Stadium after these messages with some final words. You're watching CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. <laughs>